Let's see. Yeah, we all have yep, we're on. sound. Yo, We've yo, got yo, everything. Yo, yo, sounding good? Yeah, here. Talking to your mic? Yo, hey. Howdy. Yo, Arg. yo. Yes, you guys are on. I'm going to yeah. turn up that volume just a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Yes, welcome back to the Hummingbird Podcast. We are here with... um. You, my friend, my new, my very, very, very new friend. I just met him, yeah. uh, like what, like half an hour ago, something like that. Yeah, just about uh, justice. Yeah, and uh, yeah, Instagram name. How do you? What's your Instagram? It's like underscore. Yeah, so underscore neither nor neither is the nor. duo. That's two of us. It's me neither, and my brother Shanks. Neither? Oh, really? So yeah, you yeah. Share it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's me and neither nor, but mine's is Kumo the third. Okay. Um, two sides of the same coin. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Awesome. And then here with a uh, huh? Should you have a mic? Uh, well, I mean, he's got this one. This one should be oh, picking, picking up. up all this yeah, stuff. here. If anything, I'll move it a little bit closer. For him, you just have to like lean in. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. And I'm here with uh with Swoon and uh, Fahim, and I'm sure most people are already know who these two are. But if you don't, uh, JD's a producer. Fahim is a everything he, he <laughs> produces and he plays guitar and he is um michael sarah's uh reincarnate <laughs> michael sarah <laughs> and uh, is that so a thing i never heard that before that's you never heard that it's a thing he it's said a thing, thing. <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a thing it, it's not it's not even like one person or two people say it. I, I feel like a lot of people have told you that you're they say yeah. like Indian Michael Sarah, even though you're not. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> there's this one time I walked into a Seven Eleven, uh, not a Seven Eleven, fucking. Uh, there's this one time I walked into a Subway and the, the sandwich uh, art- art- artist. <laughs> sandwich artist. Sandwich artist. So they call him right. Um, they're just like, bro, you look like Michael Sarah, straight up. You look like Michael Sarah. Yeah, yeah. You got the Michael Sarah energy. I get. I, I didn't. That's I never what thought I thought. You yeah. Look like right, Sarah. Right, right. I don't I know. Think Maybe you look like Michael Sarah. Michael Sarah. I think you I think that energy is just so like strong that it's just like makes people interesting. Think of him. My face more. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right. But, yeah. Yeah. We're all we're all here. Yes. I have no idea what this is gonna look like. I I try to do some like research uh-huh. on you before <laughs> before, but I couldn't. There wasn't enough on your Instagram to right. like go yeah. off of. Let's just I, interview you. Yeah. So um. So uh, tell tell us a little bit about what you do then. <laughs> uh, I'm a producer. Um, uh, yeah. I make music. I just make things in general. But yeah. recently I've been focusing on music. Um, I produce for the Worst Generation, the Worst Gen. That's that's my team. It's okay. like a, it's like a a um what would you call that? Collective. Um, collective. A collective yeah. of eight people of all different Crew. types. Of, yeah, exactly. Rappers, singers, instrumentalists. Um, and we just and we just get busy. We make all different types of music. Uh, it's me and Shanks mainly that produces all the music. And um, everyone kind of does their own thing as well too. Yeah. But you know, what what do you what do you do as part of it? Like you you produce, but do you, do you like do like the instrumentals and stuff too? Yeah, yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Um, some of like the instrumentals for sure. Um, I got verses here and there, you know, rapping, singing, all all different types of shit. Yeah, I'm kind of like Diddy. That's, that's yeah. how I like to look at myself as like the executive producer who yeah. kind of like oversees like shit. Coordinator. Makes, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just try to make shit come together because there's so much good ideas that are flying around like between the eight of us yeah um and it's somebody has to like come together and be like okay this is what this is going to be a project or this yeah, is going to be yeah. like a yeah. single or whatever yeah it makes sense so i try to just be like you know <clears throat> master p yeah and bring it, that kind it, of it requires that because you, you can have a group of like really talented people but if you don't have do you consider yourself like a business person or like business oriented um yeah i, I think i have pretty good business acumen i'm not yeah. like a business person but acumen you know, that's yeah. that's sounds like business <laughs> Um, yeah, no, because, like, even you just, like, taking the initiative to, like, reach out and, and do this is, like... Yeah, I just thought this would be fun. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Like, I actually... I think I told you this uh, a little bit earlier, but I was, like, um, I had learned about you through Aaron. He posted, like, one of the songs that I think y'all two did, actually, that yeah. the Cookie Cutter oh, Fantasy. Fantasy. I fucking love that song. <laughs> oh, right. I, I heard a little snippet. I was like, what the hell? Listen That's to that so whole funny. thing. And that was, like, exactly what, what I needed to hear that day. So, like, that shit wow. was fire. Um, so, you yeah, know, and then I saw a couple months later that she started the podcast, and I was like, I always thought, like, oh, that would be fun. But yeah. I didn't have anything at the time. I was just working on a bunch of shit. And now that I have, you know, stuff to come talk to you about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want people on in general just to, like, talk about exactly. random shit. Like, even if they're not... Because I, I tend to talk to music people because that's, like, who I know. And exactly, I know, yeah. But I want to talk to all kinds of different about whatever. walks of life. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what we're here to do. Yeah. Here on the Hummingbird Podcast. <laughs> on the Hummingbird. Yeah. Why, so why Hummingbird? Hummingbird. That's a good so, question. Hummingbirds have been very influential in my life just mm. as like a I kind of look at them as like a spiritual 
animal. Oh man, I tapped into something I didn't know. It oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, it's it's deep. It it, it goes deep. My it it's the hummingbird like, thing. Yeah, reminiscent of like my mom and my grandma because they're very into like hummingbirds and like all over my grandma's house is like hummingbird paraphernalia all over wow. the fucking place. Paraphernalia. Yeah, 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 she's smoking out of her hummingbird bomb. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> hummingbird pipes. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just it. I, I feel like I, I think of myself as like a hummingbird, like this like little fucking thing. But uh, that defies time. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Um, that was like, completely unrelated, but uh, like. What I'm sorry. How do you see yourself as a hummingbird, though? Like I was going to ask, like, go deeper in that. I, I, I like, I think, what do you relate to? Because I don't really know anything about hummingbirds in and general. And what role do they play in society that you feel like you connect with? You know, I feel like you, you you see a hummingbird, and it's just something that kind of like is in for a second, then it like just kind of disappears and goes mm. and does. Yeah, 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 that's definitely what I, if I think of a hummingbird, that's what I think of it as, like, floating around in one place and then going in and then going in somewhere else. And yeah, then and you'll probably only ever see it one time. Yeah, and exactly, like and then the, it's somewhere else. It yeah. feels like a dream. I feel like every time I see one, I'm like, is that real? It's yeah, it's like, the way that it's moving? Yeah, and, and then I have to ask sound. myself, like, am I dreaming? Like, no, this is real life. Yeah, and then it's yeah, so yeah true. they're, they're true. <laughs> We have hummingbird feeders on the balcony. We have a few of them, so we have them coming in all the time. They come fucking flapping their wings, and I don't know, just something about them being so tiny, but, like, kind of, like, ethereal in nature yeah they are kind of ethereal it's true they seem like sure. magical yeah yeah, yeah like little fairies like, it's true yeah they're the closest thing to fairies that I can that's very think true of. and is it, is it hummingbirds that never stop flying or whatever yeah, they say that but that's not true they, oh, okay. they, they land and stuff <laughs> okay yeah but, but they can fly completely still right yeah like just yeah, like suspended not moving yeah, forward or back their wings moving that's fucking wing. incredible they're like little like, like bird insects how can something like just be what would you call that? I guess anatomically just like perfect. Like how could it just fit in the world so perfect? That shit trips me out all the time. I, I don't know. Ask Little me. Little things like Ask that. me how I do it. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do it? Um, no, I feel you though. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. So then Ooh. it was just kind of a no-brainer to call it the Hummingbird Podcast then? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking It's your spirit of, animal? Yeah, it's definitely my spirit animal. I, right. I've been thinking like I, I, I was trying to do it the other day and I got kind of got fucked over by Spotify for artists, but I was trying to change my name to Hummingbird. Like just make Your the artist transition, name? yeah. Oh shit! And just go by Hummingbird, just entirely mm. like as a producer and like. That's cool. Yeah. Kind of like how Tame Impala does. Fucking, Tame Impala. You know, yeah. Kevin yeah. Parker does Tame Impala. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but. That's cool. Yeah. But my fucking distributor doesn't let me do it for some reason. Like doesn't. Let oh me, really? Yeah, they're like, uh, you can't change it, or you, your streams and your songs and stuff aren't going to carry over. That's so dumb. Like distributors really be fucking people over like that. I like, fucking hate. I hate it's the stupidest set of stipulations. I hated that when I was putting up the album that mm -hmm. I that we had just released, the yeah. word genuine. It was like it was like yo, you can't spell this like this. You can't use this for the album. Like what the fuck We're are you talking Distro about? Kid? Yeah, yeah. yeah. DistroKid fucking. Sucks and it's just like yo, that. why well, am I using this? Yeah, like, it's not just DistroKid though. I mean, it's I, uh, a lot of them. Like, and it's weird because I had, I had a, a distributor early on that didn't have that, and so I was just used to that. Like I had I had had a song come out that was full caps, like mm -hmm. the you know, and then. Um, I forgot what else. Like I did a couple things that were kind of not you weren't supposed to be able to do, and then I had to switch distributors because they kind of became like private and became this other thing. Mm. So I had to, and then they did a thing where they naturally just switched. So it was Stem originally, and they naturally like plugged me in so I could just like transfer over to TuneCore. And then when mm. I went to TuneCore, like not only were they not letting me upload new songs with different kind of stuff but they went back to the, like for example the song that I had that was in full caps and made it not full caps oh what the hell they changed it That's and like for a little while it was like off my page and they had to do a bunch of but I can't change it y'all yeah. <laughs> can change it to fit whatever like whatever reason you guys exactly, have those yeah. stipulations and I was like how are you gonna tell me that I can't do it if it was already there and I and know a ton it. of different music on there that look at like I could paint you I could show you a million different examples of songs exactly. that, Rock that, their yeah entire... all their songs are in the cab <laughs> exactly yeah. Curry. It's yeah. like so. It, you're obviously not saying that it's not possible. What you're saying is that it's not possible for me because I'm not famous or whatever. What, exactly, what they, yeah. what, which is dumb. The reason that they give super, is like something like it's, the stores. Yeah, the stores. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But that's I think it technically has to go because there's just like it's such like a what's it called like like a blanket system that they use. Yeah. That pretty much if any one of those like forty five hundred stores or whatever yeah. has that stipulation, then it just follows the strictest out of all of them, like the lowest common denominator. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So. It's yeah, um, it's just really dumb. Yeah. When I when we were uploading um, Andrea's song "Tenant," like the very end of the song, has this sort of like it fades out, and then there's just the sound of like kids playing and stuff, mm -hmm. like at the very very end. And there's another rule that you can't have more than like two seconds or something of like silence, like in a song. Yeah. Like your song can't just go silent. 
Like, it, it, it just can't. Like, it, it, that's a rule. Even in, like, the middle of the song? Yeah, in the middle of the song or something, it can't be more than, like, two seconds of silence or something. What? And then, I so this is a Kanye song. They, or two I'm sure. I mean, and that, that's just dumb because it's a creative decision. So that's what right. I, I remember. I got into a huge argument or, like, <laughs> many arguments over email with, with the distributors being, like, you guys are making creative decisions for us. It's not it's right, ridiculous. Right. Like, yeah. You know? And so they they rejected it first because they were like you need to take out the silence at the end, and I had to be like it's not silence. If turn your turn song. your fucking thing up, and you'll hear that there's there's ambient noise. And I would mm-hmm. and I wrote I was like fucking like a lawyer. I was like I would argue the ambient noise is, does not count as silence. Blah 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 because it's part of the thing. And I was like arguing why it's why I think it's like an integral part of the song. And I was like I'm not gonna take it out because it's gonna take away a lot of what the song has and blah blah blah, blah and all this stuff. And then they responded and were like, "Okay, you're right. Yeah, fine, fine. Okay, you're right. Stop. <laughs> Leave us and alone." And then they left it. Yeah. Yeah. And they accept it finally. But like, yeah, we don't actually care that much. It was so <laughs> dumb. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Yeah, it's not that they couldn't do it; is they didn't want. To. I kind of noticed this on a like newer like reissue albums of albums in the '90s or '80s that came mm, out because yeah. uh, they would always have. There would be these things. There would be the thing where they would have a secret track. If you let the CD, yeah, the hidden yeah, track, yeah, right? Yeah, That's yeah. exactly yeah, what I'm thinking about. Thinking about NERD, yeah, they, yeah they like there was 45 seconds of silence before. Yeah, they yeah, or yeah, like Nirvana, so... like there was like six minutes of silence before they went into yeah, endless name. Was, tons and, like, of great albums that they do don't, that. they don't allow that silence to play out anymore. Yeah, the streaming services. Just, oh really? Oh, yeah, they they it, there must take... be something with like the the legal like <laughs> what is a stream type of thing. Then it must it must have yeah, you're right, you're right, yeah, yeah. It's true because if you just have like you could just upload tons of silence and then have people just play it like on repeat we all day every day and then you would make money that way yeah just do that with any song just turn the volume off no but if the volume's all the way down it doesn't count oh really i think yeah yeah oh, if you're muted yeah. it doesn't count okay because yeah. they're not listening yeah so like you know what i mean it has to count as someone listening to your song the volume, that they even kept track of that oh yeah, yeah. Well, they well, keep track i through uh, chris brown he was always when he was dropping albums he was posting like those like you guys seen those like instruction manuals like, like the yummy shit? i know yeah, yeah, yeah yo, let's, get, let's get it to number yeah. one yeah exactly yeah, yeah. Like, the same thing that's that shit's that's so sad sad yeah it's like what just you I feel it though you gotta you finesse their word because artists are being finessed in general that's by the true. whole streaming You're thing right, all they yeah. figured out to do was like yo this is like legal limelight but they're being that's yeah. what Spotify is yeah. that's what Apple Music is Yeah. so wh- whatever artists have to do to finesse their way back to making a little bit of money I feel that like I get it too but it's just the thing the reason why that's an issue I think well a couple things for one with someone like Justin Bieber and Chris Brown it's like you guys are already <laughs> no, rich yeah, as fuck yeah. and at the top of the game like why do you need this and then on top of that though ooh, Pokemon um hey. On top of that, though, um, shit, I lost my train of thought. Okay. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, beside the fact that they're just famous and stuff, it's also just because, like, you know, yeah, you're finessing the system and getting more money, even though people aren't really listening to your music. But it also then like over represents how much people care about one thing it's or true. another. It's and true. that's the thing about right now too is that you know you go to somebody's page and like really the stream counts are not as representative like of how popular certain songs are. Because you can see a song that's really, really popular not have as many streams as a song that you, that doesn't really get listened to very, very often. Or songs that are, you know, like, look at, like, Michael Jackson's Spotify page. It's not, like, you know, record-breaking. Yeah. But that music is obviously s- super popular and, like, influential in the sense that everybody knows it and, like, etc. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People so that every day. So, like, the correlation between what has the most streams is not always you know equal to what everybody's actually listening to out there and i there's another thing that i always used to like pay a lot of attention to and that's like when i go see somebody live i pay attention to like what do they play last what do they play first whatever and so you know usually your last song is your most popular that's like and so you would think like i'll go see an artist that i don't really know very well and then i'll listen to their highest streamed song and i'm like that's probably the song they're going to end with but then they don't. They'll play it in like the middle of the set, and then they'll end with a different song. And I'm like, oh, this song doesn't have nearly as many streams. But amongst their fans, it's the fan it's favorite, the one, yeah. or it's the yeah. popular song, or like whatever. So it's 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 misrepresenting like a lot of that kind of stuff. And then especially when you start breaking the system by doing those kinds of finessing things, yeah, it does it even more. I would I would you know? argue, but it that If your fans are willing to sit there and keep your shit on repeat, like <laughs> I guess that is kind of representative that like you. Like at least your fans are pretty die hard for you in order to do. Yeah, it. but that's not the point. Yeah, it's no, not about I, your fans it, being it's, it's it's dishonest it's and listening. it's like the like it, you're getting like accolades and like say you, you your shit goes platinum or whatever, but it didn't really go platinum. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. Have you guys but seen? I, I saw this video recently. Like this guy was sort of going into the sort of like bullshit that the sort of streaming algorithm is. So, from what I understand. First off, there's people who have like phone farms. Do you guys know what those yeah, are? So, yeah. like, no. They have like a like a shit ton of 
smartphones and they have Spotify and all of them playing the same song just over and over their own their own music. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. There's like pictures that would be like a whole wall of just Androids, I like all yeah. types wow. of different phones, and then they'll, they'll all be playing the same song. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. and and they're they're getting streams like that. But the thing is, what the way that Spotify streams work is that when one artist is getting there, there's like a fund, there's like a group fund, and as one person gets more streams, it's actually taking away money from the it, it devalues the the, the other ones, yeah. So as one person is getting more, it's actively t- making each other person's stream worth less. Like it's everyone like else on Spotify? Everyone else on Spotify. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So when well, you that have, makes sense because the easier it is to get the streams, the less value they hold. Yeah, but you know? and, and it's just like they have like a fund. They have like a set amount that they that yeah. they can they, – they don't have infinite money. So it's like – Well, right. Oh, oh, I see. oh, right. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah so it's it's literally, they, they only have a certain amount of money that they can pay artists. So it's like you can't earn more than they have because they don't have it. Exactly. So yeah, that so makes sense. So if one person is earning more, other people don't have as much access. To yeah, it. and I mean the ones that are really like making the biggest impact are the ones that are getting billions and billions of streams, which is yeah. happening a lot. And the crazy thing too is that that's why I feel like as time has gone on, you know, the the big big successes are are you know becoming less and less. Uh, I don't know, like significant, I guess. You know what I mean, like. Back then, I feel like a platinum record is like crazy because it's like, you know, that means this amount of people went out and bought, like, went to a store, bought your shit, yeah, and like listened and probably one million purchases. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like actually. Whereas now it's streams, which is not as much, and then there's all these other kind of like games going on in, within the thing. So it's like TikTok. So you know, you have people who are like blah blah blah, like outsold the Beatles or outsold Michael Jackson or whatever. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but they. Didn't, I don't like though. that. I don't like how, how there's a lot like, of records that are being broken. Like you're taking these records away from Madonna, from Michael Jackson, sure, from these yeah. people, and it's not the same thing at all. But I was actually yeah. going to use that point on the opposite side of what mm-hmm. you're saying, saying that like, fif- I think because like the the general math is like 1,500 streams equals one album purchase. I think so. Yeah. And that's yeah. like ridiculous. That doesn't make sense to me. It should be something closer to like. I don't know, maybe like five, six hundred, yeah, yeah, maybe. Because yeah. to get all like fifteen hundred, and that counts as one. Yeah. Like that's that's you know, I don't know. That's that's that's, just, that's that's really crazy. I feel like there's a misrepresentation against the artist in that way. Yeah, like they would yeah. actually be selling way more if yeah, you know yeah. we if it was like calculated properly. Yeah, that's that, true. I, how, you know? I don't even know how that's calculated. Is yeah, it just like an either. arbitrary number that's it's Spotify an arbitrary number, number that nobody really ever asked twice about but when you think about it like that's fucking an insane amount of music to have to consider like one play of an album I, I don't even yeah. know who, who decides something like that cause it's like yeah that's the part that's crazy is like, like government is, yeah somebody is like is the like big business it would be like billboard in conjunction Spotify. with the record labels and stuff like that yeah. yeah there's there's some sort of I guess there's some sort of like board members or something I don't even know how that yeah. shit works it would, it would, the final decision would, would definitely go to Billboard because yeah. they're the ones who are counting okay this is an album Whether sale not it's, this yeah, one is going platinum they decide if it or goes platinum or, or not um, it's a very RC, R, what is it the fucking the people that that decide like the people that certify something oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah the record yeah. RICA, RCA or, 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 I, yeah, I was gonna say RCA too but are those it's not like, RCA? Are those RCIAA like, or some yeah. shit uh, RCA are those public companies or are they like I don't fucking know honestly like I don't look into that kind of shit enough because I feel like it's one of those things I mean this sounds terrible but it's like one of those things where it's like same with like the government sometimes I don't want to look too deeply into how the government works because then I get to a, I always hit a wall where I'm like oh then there's nothing I can do about that yeah. mm. so now I'm just pissed off and, I, and there's yeah. no reason you know what I mean and it's in the music industry like I don't want to get fucked over but at the same time like I just don't have the bandwidth to like want to have as much to care as much about the music that I do and then also, and then also yeah. go and try and change the game in this other way <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. I can't like I'm not gonna <laughs> that's have that's a good way fucking... to, to get yourself fucking squashed too what do you mean? If you're if you're trying to work with oh, the right. industry that right, you're trying right. to like uproot, dismantle, yeah, exactly. yeah. they're gonna just, just kill you. Yeah, fucking yourself over. Yeah, you gotta no, get there first, true. anyways. I like yeah. to use the analogy of like you know you can't change the rules like before you're From the, the outside, guy. Like yeah. you can't you got you can't just like go onto a basketball court and say hey we're gonna play this game now we're gonna you yeah. guys were playing twenty one but now we're gonna play horse. Yeah, yeah like yeah. no, well, who the fuck are you? Like we've been here, yeah, we've yeah, been yeah, doing you, this, so you have to have some leverage before you decide to. That's true. No, you're exactly right. I mean that's why they're saying too that like. I don't know if you remember, like, a little while ago, I forget who it was, that was, like, talking a lot about how, like, Drake should go independent. Like, yeah. If Drake goes independent, that it's going to just that flip the fuck music the game industry. Up, yeah. And, like, it's true. It's going to take, like, someone really huge just being like, you know what, fuck all this. Like, even Drake kind of did, I mean, not really, I mean, it was really small, but he, he, you know, in his Grammy speech when he was saying, like, 
like this doesn't matter like mm-hmm. basically he was trying to say like the grammy doesn't fucking matter like you know and recently did it again too i don't know if you guys saw that uh, talking about the weekend and how he got snubbed for, oh, for the yeah, grammy yeah, and yeah. he was like see this is like what i'm talking about this yeah, is not yeah. even representative of what's actually happening the right more now. people yeah. say that and the more people are open about that and the more that becomes like commonplace that kind of conversation the less and less power these kinds of things have like the grammys shouldn't have the amount of power no you know no one man should have all that power <laughs> uh, the the grammys shouldn't have that power though because it's like who the fuck are you to decide what's important and not important and then you keep making i mean this is stupid this is i'm going against my own argument here <laughs> you keep making the wrong decisions which is dumb because obviously it's subjective as the idea but whatever right right but like you know I've always been on that wave, though, of, like, yo, we don't have to, like, fuck the Grammys. Like, yeah, we can, yeah. if, like, imagine if, like, I don't know, Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, Kanye West, like, yeah, a yeah. couple of those, like, just the higher-ups. Yeah, they decide, all decide, yo, we're going to make some new stuff, and we're going to make sure that, like, the people who are voting actually listen to the music that they're voting on. Because that's, I don't know if you guys knew this, but in, in, the, in the Grammy committee, like, every person... In the Grammy committee, who has a voting right, has to vote on every single topic, oh, which really? doesn't make sense. Yeah, even if you don't listen. to If you're a you country star and you've never, you've been listening to country your whole life, you have to put in a vote for the electronic and the hip hop, and the, when you have no idea what it, what that's even supposed to sound like, you know. Yeah. So that's that's a part of it that I definitely think is like, I don't know. It's just too. It's too. It's too general. Of yeah, a thing is, to even yeah. ever be accurate, you know. And the thing is, like, there should be a hip hop awards, it's, it's a country awards. Uh, I mean, and there, there awards, are is the thing too. I mean, but something with prestige. I was have, that's the thing. That yeah. Exactly. I was having this conversation very recently with Carter actually, because I was saying like somebody should just start like artists should get together like a title situation Unionized. where artists get together and start a new, you know, Unionized thing or whatever. The or yeah, but I'm saying like start their own like award show or whatever to try and take away from the Grammys. But the thing is, there's tons of those American Music Awards and blah 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 and like tons of different awards. And the the thing about the awards at the end of the day is they're only as good as like people. You have to just it's 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 like fugazi. You have to just can you have to convince people that it's important in order for it to be important. It's not important unless believe people believe it's important. And does that make sense? Like. Yeah, like, for sure. It would take it would take uh, the people like the people would have to get behind something. So for the people to get yeah, behind yeah. something, people we love would have to like Frank Ocean yeah, we could yeah, come yeah, out today yeah, and yeah, say, "Yo, yeah, this yeah. is what we're doing." But but and not then, even like one or two, right? But like yeah. the whole music industry. And then the thing is like yeah, like because I, I think about this with the Grammys a lot, where I'm like, I, I you know I started thinking about it and like what the fuck is like this is bullshit. It's just not even doesn't actually mean anything. Like it's just some like you have a trophy. And it's like, what did you get the trophy for? Like, did you get it for doing this thing or doing that thing? Like, no, it's not I got even it for because, having the best song or like, anything. It's not for having. It's not for anything except it's like, oh, it's this group of people decided that I should that I deserved it. I guess mm. that's it. And so, but even though the thing itself isn't real, it's all based on like a, a just a, a mutual lie or like a thing that yeah, everybody's it's like just patting themselves on the back. It's too. everybody agreeing like this matters, right? Yeah, okay, everybody votes yes, this matters, so it matters. But um. But the implications of getting one are very real. Yes, Winning yes. a Grammy changed your fucking life. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, everybody Being wants to work with you Grammy all of a sudden. Will, like, triple your, your, exactly. your rate of pay. You Everything, I mean? exactly. And so it's kind of crazy how much, like, real world, like, you know, consequences are based around something that is, you know, fundamentally just imaginary. You yeah. Know? It's, but I guess you could say the same about all of this shit. So. Yeah, everything, <laughs> right? That's literally, literally everything is just like made up, all this sort of like social society is just like this like we we have this fake sort of like system going hmm. on and we all add to the system and we're all fucking part of it. And then there's all these like subsystems inside of it, like the Grammys and the fucking Oscars and <laughs> everything else. There's, yeah. there's no. Is that that's just a depressing thought, though? I mean, it is, but I mean, I don't know. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter. Like the more I've started to like, the more I thought about it, the do you more I've win a Grammy? started to realize, do I want to win a Grammy? I mean, would I enjoy? Would I be? Would I enjoy the like being nominated or whatever? Yeah, I'd be happy if the so if I got nominated or whatever. But um, is it a goal of mine? Not really. No, I don't really care about winning a Grammy. Like, it's not something that I am actively trying to pursue or, like, chase or whatever. Um, Because I was going to say, the more I've thought about it, like, the more I've realized that what in the grander scheme looks good. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, why they be beating up kids in anime? (laughs) Kids, like, four years old. It's a grown man, bro. This This is is... a fucking shit to watch, though, Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Um, Anyway, um... (laughs) So the more I've started to realize things like, like, you know, you think of an artist that like, 
that like was doing really well and then you're like what happened to them like they yeah. fucking disappeared or whatever and then you're like damn that's a sad thought you know you think like damn like they fell off or whatever but like maybe they're 10 times happier now but because they were miserable when they were famous and now they're like you know what fuck being famous i'm gonna go live my life and i'm gonna be happy and then so the more i think about that i'm like okay you know the, you know i same thing applies to like wanting to be wanting to have prestige let's say right which is right. A, a trap that i think a lot of us fall into including myself i mean i care about that kind of thing even though i don't want to i do you know i want to be respected i want to exactly. be i want people to be like damn bro like you fucking whatever you do you know yeah. so i want that but i i'm actively fighting against my own kind of desire like deeply rooted desire to have that and so you know i look at certain artists that don't break into like something new or like whatever that maybe just have like a smaller cult following or whatever and they just live off of that and whatever um you know i'll look at like bands that just like you know you don't hear about them on a daily basis but they have they're touring and they have their fan base and they have enough to get by and they're living comfortably and they're just and they're happy and etc and in the in the like public consciousness they're not doing anything you know you're like oh that person's like not a success or like whatever right. but like that's success you know that that's that is success that might be more success than like justin bieber who had his childhood taken away from him you know what i mean or like whatever yeah. like because he was so fucking famous or etc like this motherfucker was miserable and depressed and suicidal for a long time and it's like but we look at that and we're like success that's what the success is you know what i mean and it's like true. obviously this this is like almost like a cliche point but i guess what i'm trying to say is you know it applies the same with the grammys and with all this kind of shit it's like you know I feel like it's easy to get locked into this idea like I want to be this one specific thing but that might not be what is like best for you that might not be what is like going to make you happy or make you feel good in any way you know what I'm saying so I just I don't know <laughs> think about that more <laughs> Todd A by the way said Dan that to invite him on the show oh yeah get on yeah I, I've been, wa I've been actually get wanting to he said to... I'll come naked okay Whoa. beautiful like, I, I've been actually thinking about someone, reaching out to him someone texted me during the podcast what is this? I don't know. Pee pee? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm a FaceTime <laughs> Okay. All right. We, we've got a. <clears throat> oh, shit. We've got a FaceTime special about guess. to happen right now. Who is it? We don't know. Somebody messaging for him about pee pee and caca. All right. Oh, wait. It's probably Tade. <laughs> yeah, but like. Oh, is it? I don't know. You think it's Tade? I don't know. Oh, shit. It is Tade. I knew hey. it. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> I knew it was Tade. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, he's getting naked. Hey, Hell yeah. Camera, I huh? need him on the podcast right now. I need him on the podcast immediately. Don't get my stream taken down. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get fully naked. We're on live. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, god. Oh, I think they might be ready. We might have to leave in a second. Oh, what? Yeah, for sure. Oh. All right, before you leave him, I want to ask, what, what's your opinion on fame? Do you want to be famous? Or what? what? Um, I don't want to be. F I don't necessarily care about being famous because that seems really stressful. I d would love to be respected and have artistic enlightenment. Artistic you, enlightenment. Pretty, uh, if you get yeah. if if fame ends up your way, what do you? <clears throat> how do you think you're gonna handle it? Oof. That's a. You, you know. No one has an answer. Yeah, yeah. That, that's that's a because none of us really know what fame feels like. You know, yeah. like the type of fame where you get followed around with a. The, by paparazzi and that, people that sounds fucking horrible and every personal worst, relationship yeah. that you have it sounds like the most like, mentally unhealthy lifestyle that it's, you literally, yeah, like, it's literally like taking the humanity from a person and like yeah it's crazy it's ridiculous yeah you, you're, you're essentially like kind of cu cultural livestock yeah. You know? yeah, you're, yeah, you know? Yeah, wow. Yeah, because people, people follow you around and, like, most What's of them are, like, sicko fans, you know? And you yeah. and, and they don't treat you like a person like, I've seen some like, I, I, I mean, keep going back to this example but just because he's, like, such a fucking prime example of this but justin bieber like i remember watching a video one time where he was like yelling at he was at a concert and people kept throwing water at him mm -hmm. oh yeah and he was like guys we're dancing up here like we're gonna fucking slip and i'm gonna die like i'm gonna get i'm gonna get really badly hurt because of you guys like oh stop. yeah he was getting pissed at he was fans. getting yeah, really yeah. mad because and then he would be like stop and they'd be like ah, and they just kept throwing it at him and he was like seriously st like this isn't a show this isn't part of the show I'm telling you to fucking stop it. Like, I'm looking at you as a person, from a person to person, telling you to stop. And yeah. they just kept doing it because to them, they're like, well, you're not a, you're not real. You're yeah, just you're, a demon. You're like yeah, a, yeah, you know like what a... I mean? Like, but I love you is what mm -hmm. the pretense is. But it's like, if you love me, then treat like, me like wow, look at this human. person. Like, he's yeah. reacting yeah. to me. Like, yeah. he sees me. Like, exactly. Yeah. 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 Livestock, livestock is the perfect example. It's like going to the fucking zoo, you know? Yeah, like, really you is. see, yeah. you, you, they don't treat the animals with despite fucking throwing peanuts mm -hmm. and shit at them. But, man, 
Yeah. So if you, you think that if you're in that, if you're in that position, you, do you think that you would want to just like step out of the limelight or? Oh, absolutely. I mean, who knows? Because uh, fame could certainly change. Because like true, human, yeah. the human like ego is a very fragile oh, thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like a compliment could change the course of like one thing near, you know you like it's Hitler. Hitler. Yeah. yeah i know I yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. They compliment like, his art enough yeah, yeah literally yeah. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> yeah i know that that, that shit is it's, a, it's weird it's a weird thought you know yeah to even imagine your life like that it's like it's like hard to even yeah i don't know mm. yeah it's scary I like weird thoughts yeah i like yeah. weird thoughts too <laughs> but yeah. double entendre do you want to be famous dan <laughs> I don't think I, w- I don't want to be. It's the same. It's the same thing. Right? I think there's a part of me that does. There, there, but there's there, a part of there, but the actual part of me that is has a fucking I yeah. Think, just being a fucking superstar. The part of me that does is the part of me that usually I want to fucking silence. I want to have I mean? influence. Like I want to. That's exactly that, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's that's what I care more about, and just like trying to push out like whatever message or wh- whatever I can do while I'm alive, like. And I need influence in order to do that. So yeah, that's and how that's, fame comes. Like they're, they're they go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, that know? that's that's definitely. Um, I I always used to say that. I always used to be like, I want because my goal really is to keep being able to do stuff. Like mm-hmm. my goal is to just like and whatever that is, whether it's music or outside of it, like film, which is another thing avenue that I want to, you know, go down. Um, I want to have you know whether it's money, success, fame, influence, whatever it is. I want to have enough of it to, you know, unlock the capability to do these Absolutely. things. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, if I want to do this, I can do it because I have this, this, and that. But, you know, obviously, you don't really, like, with fame, it's not like you get to just take enough and be like, I, I don't, I'm good. I don't want it anymore. Cost. Well, it comes at a cost, but also you don't get to control how much of it you do or don't get. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you might get way more than you wanted and, like you know and then you're fucked you know what i mean like it's 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 a pretty crazy thing then you have to, I'm, I'm excited for the billy eilish documentary i've been mm, mm. Yeah, have you guys been seeing stuff about that yeah. not really Already? But, yeah. um i don't think i've ever heard well, a billy eilish song oh uh, what really Are you serious? i don't think so i'm not sure maybe i've oh, heard one i didn't know it was they're not bad yeah no, they're, they're really good you've definitely I hear good things you've definitely heard one like in passing but yeah, yeah probably, yeah, yeah. I, probably. I, I really liked her album i really enjoyed her album um and i thought it was really well produced like phineas is an amazing producer and like her she was definitely you could tell that how undeveloped she was like as an artist at that point too sure, and, sure. Like, she, she's gonna keep getting i think she has yeah that's what i said too i was like i think she has potential to just to really be in a really important artist like yeah for sure because she has so much talent and so much influence and then, but and the way she's treating it is like very, you know, she doesn't seem like she's gonna stop trying to just chase her own uh, sort of imagination. I guess if that makes sense, like she doesn't seem like she's trying to box herself in by any means. She seems like she's trying to yeah expand herself as much as possible. Which yeah, is good. but it, it's it, I'm so interested to see this documentary because apparently it's just like sort of documents that like huge because she made a huge jump oh, yeah. she made like a yeah. huge leap in a 2019 was it yeah within like a, okay. within like two, two years yeah i mean yeah because yeah, she i mean obviously she was kind of like known before then but when one bad guy and like the when we all fall asleep yeah yeah yeah, came yeah, out, yeah, like, yeah she blew up oh she did yeah, yeah. so it, it it like documents that apparently and uh i don't know i'm just really interested to see that happen because you, you don't you you get a look on the inside yeah, of yeah. what that kind of fame looks like and how yeah, it yeah. takes hold. No, definitely. I mean, I'm it's sure it's scary. crazy. It is really really scary. Um, you know, has a fantastic level of fame. Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl. Dave does Grohl. Have he had two tiers of fame. fame. He had the, he had Nirvana. The tier Nirvana. Yeah. Which uh, he was just a drummer, you know. Yeah. But d- the drummer, the in, like, drummer, one of the biggest one of the bands, the fans, but world, nonetheless yeah. not as like recognized as yeah as the singer. Obviously, yeah. I, I mentioned Nirvana. So I I really don't listen to Nirvana that, that much anymore. Yeah. I used to listen to them a lot but like okay yeah Dave Grohl yeah. Uh, Dave Grohl and then, then, then he found yeah with the Foo Fighters which is arguably one of the most influential alternative rock bands like the early 2000s and uh, <clears throat> late 90s and sure yeah yeah it's about, true, about it's true. Yeah, one of them. he I mean, does have a good rock, level of fame know? I mean I think there's a lot of people that have like careers that I really really look up to I mean like overall I mean I was talking to you about this recently where, like overall one of my biggest influences in in, in general in music is Kanye mm-hmm. because he specifically just because he like 
you know he has that thing where he just wants to unlock his own potential to create more things oh yeah you know which is what i've always kind of like admired about him and like seen myself in that same same light of wanting to do the same thing but he also has this obsession with being like the best and being like all this stuff which i think obviously has come at a very very hefty uh, mental health cost and so that is one thing that i like the more i thought about it especially as i got older because when i was younger i would romanticize the shit out of mm. being an artist and be like yeah i want to be i want to fucking just give up everything for art mm. i remember i was dating this girl when i was in high school and i and i and somebody asked me if i if i saw myself like marrying them or whatever and i was like no like i don't think so and they're like why not and i was like because she because i asked her once if what did i I asked her something along the lines of like if she's gonna just if art is gonna be like her she was an artist but mm. if art was gonna be like everything yeah. for her, yeah. her whole life and she, I remember she yeah. was kind of like no not really like I wanna you know I wanna keep doing it but I wanna have have a family and I wanna do other things mm. and I remember being like what the fuck that's, like, so, that's bro, so it's weird been so weird, weird to me and that's kind of like a big pet peeve of mine when mm. I see somebody who has like immense talent mm. and like it's like they don't even care like yeah, yeah like yeah. I feel like there's there's so many people that I know that are like you know those people who are just like naturally good at everything that they right, try to right, do right, right. and I feel like when you are like that like you don't appreciate when you can really yeah. you don't appreciate your own potential you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so if you're just naturally good at drawing or something, then you should probably just like, oh, okay. But you you wouldn't think of where to take that, right? You right, know what I mean? Right. When somebody, I don't know. For for me, I'm I'm the exact opposite. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, I just yeah, like yeah. something enough to just kind of get good at it, then I'm like, okay, I want to yeah. take this but as there, far as it can possibly There's also yeah. like parts of like the true human experience that I think like are important too. Like right, right. That, I feel like that's where you where you. Well, yeah. So what I like, what I was trying to say, I guess my my was that that's how I felt then and then as I got older I started to realize like well there is more to life than just than just being good at something or than being an artist or than creating or whatever like and I mean I just got way less like I just started to realize like well we're not special because we create art we're just lucky because we create art because like you know the fact that like so much of human history was like you know you couldn't focus on anything besides surviving you couldn't focus on anything besides like living and like and like you know how am i gonna eat how am i gonna do this how am i gonna do that mm-hmm. and so the only the art really only arose i mean you know they would do art i guess with drawings and different things whatever but the, the way that we experience it now i think really only arose out of like being like so lucky that we don't have to think so much about that that we can dedicate our lives to like just making noise or like Absolutely. doing these kinds of things you know whatever so it's really a privilege and you know because if we were born somewhere else we probably wouldn't have you know we For wouldn't sure. be able to do the shit that, sure. we're, yeah. that we're doing right now so um i just start i just like realized like you know there's so much more to life than that and then on top of it there's like some sh- like you got to really evaluate what's worth it and not worth it you know what i mean like i remember like seeing a, an interview of james blake where he talked about this and and it and i it really like spoke to me because he was saying you know people were he, he made like a lot of his best music earlier in his career when he was very depressed and then he's like and people have told me that you know like i've gotten happier over the years and that it's like impacted my music negatively Mm -hmm. but he's like i'd rather make shitty music and be happy than make great music and be miserable Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and i'm like that's so true but there are artists and frankly i feel like to be one of the greatest artists of all time you do have to kind of sacrifice that you know look at kanye he's not a happy person you know not generally anyway maybe at times or whatever but overall he's made a huge sacrifice michael jackson all these people they're miserable people but they make the greatest shit ever kanye is a kid who finished Pokemon Diamond and then found the action replay <laughs> and still keeps going. And he just keeps, he still just keeps, keeps going. going. <laughs> that was me. That was me. Uh, like, I was playing Pearl, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like we're like we're all that. I, I, I described it as this before, but it, it's just we're... We're those kids who had the. I mean, I, I feel like like we all sort of fit that. Like we're we're the kids who had that sort of dream. Like everybody wants to be a fucking rock star when they're a kid. Right. And we right. just took it way too far. <laughs> we're, just, we're like dedicating our lives to to this fucking thing well and i mean just and just like you said it's like a fortunate thing too because yeah, i feel yeah. like yeah everybody has those dreams i still ask everybody to this day like yo what do you want to be when you grow up you know what i mean yeah, yeah, just yeah. because like everyone has something like grand that they want to do but there's all these other things that get in the way we're just like the fortunate few people who is yeah. like yo like we are we are able to hang on to this dream yeah, and yeah. continue to cultivate it yeah, over be time crazy you know what i mean because i know so many people it. bro who are better than me who are way oh, better 100%. than me yeah. who are like who can't do it because now something happened like oh, yeah. there was a death like, an unfortunate death that they had to make a move somewhere or they had a child or yeah, they went yeah. to prison or yeah. just something like that yeah, you know there's so many other circumstances yeah. 
Absolutely, and yeah. we, we we all go through our own things but i mean we like we're just so lucky to still be able to hold on Definitely. to those things that make us us because i feel like that's where a lot of depression comes from too is by losing like that Purpose. original version of yourself yeah, yeah when you yeah, stray yeah, too yeah. far and like you're just working like six days a week like 10 hours a day and stuff and like you don't really even have time to have your own thoughts and be your own person that that shit takes a toll on you yeah. for sure absolutely yeah, yeah i feel like music is a game of perseverance yeah. you know it really the is amount, the amount of people i know that have quit music who yes. had really good potential mm-hmm. um, i mean that's that's exactly right i mean I, i've had a lot of people ask me you know like facts uh, for advice when it comes to like i'm trying to get into production or making beats or whatever like how do i like what and I'll and I give them a couple like more practical things. One is like you know find somebody else that does it yes. that's near close to your level or whatever mm-hmm. because doing it alone is gonna is not gonna be nearly as fun as doing it with people. One hundred percent. Other things like that, but then I'm like the biggest secret. Like there is a secret, mm-hmm. and the secret is don't give up. You know that's really the that's really the like cheat code almost because yeah. it's like as long as you keep doing it. I feel like anybody gonna, can be great at this shit. You're gonna get like, better. Honestly, anybody yeah. can make it. It's not hard to yeah, make a great song. Hard, right? You just gotta show up, bro. You just gotta show up to the studio. <laughs> and just keep like showing bro, up, though. Keep literally, going. yeah. Well, one yeah. of the biggest lessons in a in Bill's class I've learned. Uh, remember, you know, Bill? He was just like, yes, I know Bill. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. I don't know why like, I said it like that. No, it's okay. Like duh. Yeah. Fifty percent of success. Well, Fame and I went to school. Yeah, yeah. What'd you say? Fifty percent of life is just showing up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't show up. What's the point? You know. It's not. No, it's so true. You're right. You're definitely right. I mean. And that's the thing is that that's the the unfortunate part. I mean, that's why I think it's crazy how much of this, like how much of your success, I guess, so to speak, ties into um, just being confident, like, mm-hmm. which, you know, is a we- it's like a weird concept in itself, just like being confident. But like, you know, so many of these people, the reason they give up is because they didn't believe enough in themselves. Mm-hmm. They didn't believe that they could when they could, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like obvious that they could. They just didn't. They just couldn't. To, like convince themselves of it you know what i mean so it's mm-hmm. like there are so many people with like so i mean you know you could have two people one with a m- immense talent no confidence and another one with no talent and so much confidence and the person with the confidence is probably going to do way better in life it's going to get way you know farther, what I mean? yeah. get way farther and etc it's going to you know that confidence is going to get them into the room it's going to get them into situations and etc and they're going to find something that's going to work for them it's going to get them the, the knowledge person. just showing up and yeah. just being there it's going to exactly. get you that it's going to get you yeah. that talent after exactly. after some time 100 sure. and then you know it's when they say like hard work beats talent like 100 percent of the time or whatever sure. but it's not just hard work i would say it's confidence you know yeah. like like being crazy enough to believe in yourself and being crazy enough to like believe your own lies so to speak because you're sure, lying yeah. to yourself telling yourself like i'm this i was certainly lying to myself yeah, for the first five thing. years of making you know music I mean? like i'm so tight i'm so good and i was exactly. trash and the thing i didn't even have no music i was someone's most tight yeah, i never yeah. even <laughs> finished a song yeah 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 until yeah, yeah. i got even to the point like where disassociating no, yourself. i feel like i just got to like, that point like maybe disassociating your 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 own like personal personality from whatever it is just to put on a mask yeah to be able to do that one thing you know no i feel like i feel like it's also being able to like lean into uncomfortable Ability, you know, because mm-hmm. oh, yeah, it's it, it's not a comfortable process <clears throat> being whack, exactly, <laughs> sucking at something <laughs> like being <laughs> shitty. It, it's a really uncomfortable process and it makes you feel like shit. And it, it's like, you, you, I don't know, man. I, I feel like you a have lot to fall of in love with that feeling, yeah, yeah. A lot of the confidence it comes with just knowing that it's okay and I'll get better, yes. and like that's that's fine, and being okay with the process. Yeah, a lot of people just are not okay with. I mean, what the process? They just want to be no, like you're dope exactly right. from jump, like yo, exactly. like, yeah, it's yeah. never gonna happen. It's I mean, so it happens true. that way sometimes, but only for like maybe five percent of us. And yeah, it's not, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm not yeah, one of those. I'm not one of those less, either. Yeah. I fucking yeah. sucked at it. And like, yeah. you're so right. I mean, that's it's one of those things where, like, I I definitely so many people where they're not good at it at, at, at the beginning and they're frustrated with themselves for not being good at it and i don't blame them for that because i get frustrated too like everybody gets frustrated for like oh, fuck man this isn't working or like whatever but um but i almost like i almost think of it this way sometimes i'm like 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 who are you like why would you first off why are you mad at yourself for not being like a fucking prodigy that's stupid <laughs> you know what i mean that's like being mad at yourself for not being born rich or something because you know tv I mean? and like, shit like that makes it seem like there's just so many of them like i know just, exactly you know I mean? yeah, yeah yeah and it's like it's dumb for you to be mad about that but then also on top of that like you got to respect how much other people because you you're comparing yourself to people who have put in years of of time you know mm-hmm. like that's the thing that i keep seeing in, in, in people that do that is that they you know they're always comparing like i'm not like i, I want to do it like this or whatever and i'm like look at how long that person's been doing that shit though like yeah you want to do what this person did in 50 mm-hmm. years in one day like s- like think about that like just same thing know, coming stop. back to prodigies like the thing about prodigies is that they sure they have a natural gift but like 
they have to spend hours and hours and sometimes their parents even push them to like get to that point yeah oh 100 yeah. percent. Yeah. you never get so to it's see just, that though. It's, it's, it's unpolished hours, yeah, yeah yeah and then also i ever noticed that like you see child prodigies and then you never hear about them again you know what i mean they like become yeah. adults yet <laughs> they haven't had it they haven't had i adults. think that goes back to the thing i was talking about they don't end up they end up doing you know non-remarkable things i mean not to you know whatever that's a weird statement but like it's 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 just so not about that. And then here's another thing that I, I was we, we were talking about before of like people that that you know maybe are talented but they don't they don't have an interest in whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like that used to bother me. Now it doesn't because I realize like you know I don't know like you don't have a responsibility to do something just because you're good at it or just because like whatever. You know what I mean? Um, there's this there was this interview on like a mexican talk show um in spanish it just came up came up on like my facebook like years ago or whatever and i and i remember watching and i fucking loved it because this guy was just saying all the stuff that i really really connected with and one of the things that he was saying was he was like there are tons of people who think they were born to do something that they just can't do like mm-hmm. he was like you know if you if, you know there are people who want to be like an incredible opera singer but they just don't have that they just don't have the voice for it you just can't do it you know what i mean like you're not gonna be on broadway or you're not gonna be in an opera or whatever like on in this theater or whatever because you just you you can't do it like i'm sorry you don't have you know what i mean or like you're not gonna be in the nba you know if you don't fuck and if you don't if you you're not good at basketball you know at a certain age or whatever so there are certain dreams that and certain things that people really feel like they were made for that that they're just it's just impossible it's just a realistic should thing they, should they give up though um not necessarily give I up mean, <laughs> yeah you're not gonna <laughs> well, do it on. you're not tall enough <laughs> well, so, but this is the thing though <laughs> this is what i think this is what the point of all of this is is that we put such a stigma on the idea of giving up mm-hmm. and and it's like if you don't get i mean if it may, if it brings you happiness don't give it up but if it's only because you're kind of hanging your your self-worth on this thing that's unreachable or that's completely absolutely you know whatever like having the self-awareness to to decide to give up something for what that might better your life might be a good thing you know and and so the same works vice versa somebody might be really good at something you know what i mean and and everybody around them is like you what the fuck you got to do this you got to do this you got to do this and but they're like but then they you know they don't even have the moment to stop and be like do i want to do this is this Mm -hmm. even something that i give a fuck about you know what i mean just because i'm good at it i enjoy being good at it but do i want to you know make this my entire life or like whatever i actually wrote i have a like a screenplay about that like about Mm -hmm. a kid who's like a piano prodigy or whatever and he's like his whole life is like in that thing you know it's like he, he like his parents put him in that or whatever and he's like the child of immigrants so it's like all this pressure of like you know don't blow this thing you know yeah. we, we've we've put everything for in order for you to do this and then it's like he graduates high school and then he's like going through this kind of existential crisis right. of like do i even i don't even remember if i like this anymore yeah. or if it was something that i ever even wanted or if it was just pushed on me and there's all this pressure from every side but it's sort of just questioning because i feel like a lot of people get to that point in their lives where they're sort of questioning like i've put my entire identity on this one thing and be- yeah. once you do that you stop questioning whether or not it's even something that is you know you just it's like eating you don't question like do i need to eat you just know you need to eat mm-hmm. so it's like you st- sometimes you stop i mean i don't question myself and be like you know do i even want to do music or whatever it's just something that i wake up and i'm like this is what i do i just i know i do music or i know i'm a creative or like whatever because i identify as that i am a musician i am a creative i am that whatever so it's like you know i feel like that can be bad sometimes you know you get to a point in your life where you're just like not you know i don't know or you you, you, you kind of dis- you're dissociating i guess yeah, you yeah, know yeah. like you, you gotta find something that is real again i don't know yeah you, you know. can't identify with the stuff that you do you have to make sure that you're still identifying with like your core exactly like, yeah. self and ah oh, man yeah sorry I, I was gonna go on a point but i, I kind of forgot where no 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 it's <laughs> yeah. Cool. but yeah that that is that's a whole question though you know it's like what is the essence what is like your essence like as a person like are you are you the things you do like are you you know because like i if i suddenly lost the ability to make if I suddenly lost the ability, the ability to be creative, which would be insane, but like if I did, like I wouldn't. I I don't know what I would do. Like I don't know who I would be. I don't even know if I would want to be alive anymore. Like it's a scary thought. You know yeah. what I mean? But it's not because it would be impossible for me to actually live. Like realistically, I could live on and maybe find something else to make me happy or whatever. Right. But it would just be so depressing because I would suddenly lose my sense of self. I feel you know like everybody I mean? is creative though. It's just like a matter of like listening right. to the omens and like and like paying attention to what you're good at it, i think a lot of people want to like like you said that they put a, a pressure on themselves to do one specific thing 
but you're probably good at so many other things. Oh, you're right, you're right. It's just like pay attention to where your strengths are. Yeah, for and, sure. And foster them. Yeah. But eventually you kind of start, like I think by nature humans, you start to like put your, you know what I mean? Whatever it is what, that you're good at or even a couple things, you start to just like put yourself into it. You mm -hmm. start to like, like view it as like a mirror and see yourself in it as opposed to just keeping it as something that you do and not who you are. You know, it's hard to separate that when you really yeah. get when you really love something or you get passionate about it. It's hard to like stop yourself from being like, "This is who I am." You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it just naturally starts to become that. It's really hard to do that, even though it's bad. It is bad for your mind. You know, it's yeah. bad for you as a person to like put so much of your your self worth and your and your identity on one or two things. You know, but it's yeah. like it's also like this kind of defense mechanism against like life a little bit it's a, it's a way to be like i have a purpose. i have this yeah, yeah I, I have this, this thing. So you like, can't tell me shit yeah like. <laughs> exactly it's like an easy way to do that you know because it's hard to live out here and be like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing i don't know yeah. what anything you know what i mean yeah because that is the reality you know we all don't know what the fuck we're doing so. yeah yeah i want to throw a question out to you yeah when i've talked to them about it before but do you think that everything's predetermined do I think that uh, everything is predetermined? What so I, I do it think to this 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 yeah whole we just it's topic. funny we get into the we've we, into JD and I have gone into huge fucking debates and annoyed our girlfriends for a and long like... long time. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about I don't know about predetermined. What I do know is that I don't know shit. Is that I any this could be anything speaks, and speaks. everything. It could be nothing. It could be a TV show. True. It could be a fucking video game. But if you had to, it guess. could be if I had to guess. <laughs> if you had to put your money on it, would you put your money on that things are predetermined? If I had to, if or that thing well, just happening. Mm, I wouldn't predetermine. I w no, because that that kind of makes it seem as if it's like thought out well ahead in the future. I think this is more of like Truman Show, if you ask me. Or maybe there's like little things that are thrown into the mix every by, so often. By who? By God? By yes. what? It, w it would be God. Universe, Whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever. Sort of we're all talking about the same thing. Yeah. It's, it's God. Yeah. 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 That that thing, the yeah, creator. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do believe that much. I do believe that there is. I don't believe that. This is just all just by chance. Like, I look at a fucking zebra, and that's... You can tell me that happened by natural selection? No fucking way. Like, it's just too beautiful. They're perfect. The stripes are perfect. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's... I think that it is, like... I, I Like, a zebra, for example, like, it's perfect because we've had, like, billions of fucking years for, for nature to, like... But that doesn't even make perfect. sense. The, the, the explanation that they give us, like, oh, these... Like, natural selection selected these because they just so happen to, like be the same stripe pattern as the plants that they like okay well, but well, well why does why does yeah. natural selection and god have to be separate no i'm not saying no i'm definitely not I, saying that they don't okay yeah, but yeah. for that to be the only explanation like oh this just happened that way now i don't fucking believe that at all oh yeah, uh, yeah yeah What's, i don't even i don't even was... i don't believe anything before 1996 that's the year i came through everything uh, else might yeah, be fake yeah, yeah i was yeah. if i wasn't here for it honestly it, i don't believe in the first, 60s those first couple of years <laughs> everything up until the very moment that you're living in might be fake and just implanted all right you just got it implanted right now exactly i mean it the thing is like like i don't know I, I get what you're saying in the sense that like it's hard to believe but it's all hard to believe yeah you know there's no there's nothing that's me being here yeah there's no explanation for any of this that that's like oh yeah duh, like that makes yeah. sense like all of it is crazy but there's only one of there's only not one i'll say in terms of evolution and these kinds of things that you're talking about like natural selection that's the only explanation that has evidence mm -hmm. yeah. which is the crazy part like if you, you know like everything else is pretty much just speculation this is the one where it's like well, there's this is a, we can see is a that it's, we can see that this is this is what was happening to some extent. Exactly, I think yeah. it's just whatever whatever is the most beneficial, you know, and that that's always that's always how things have worked, you know. Everything is in a constant seek for balance. The universe is in a constant seek for balance because that's just the natural state of things. And when mm -hmm. things are thrown off balance, that's when that's when a counter has to come in. So the only reason that zebras have evolved to have their stripes and stuff is because that's the most beneficial thing to them. Like, yeah, and everything there were, else was dying off And there were tons them. of, like, other zebras that didn't look like them exactly. that died. Yeah. And that's why, you know? So, like, nature didn't... Like, people think about that a lot where they're like, look at how perfect everything is. Like, how could... A lot of people use that as, an, as a... Uh, not an excuse, but as like a reasoning for why there has to be an intelligent being above all of this, like a god, like a, a god that's like a person, you know, or whatever, that like decided to do it that way. And they're like, how could, how could all of this just have been so, like, look at a flower and look at nature. And it's like, yeah, but it was, it didn't just happen yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's like mm -hmm. the earth had like billions of years of getting it wrong before yeah. it got it right. You know what yeah. I mean? And, but that, and then that's where, that's why I threw out the question of things being predetermined because it's like, is everything just like one thing like dominoes like one thing knocks into the next thing and there's only one specific way that it can go just based on every other prior 
thing that's happened yeah. up until that point. It's like the idea that the question is like, is every moment spontaneous or is every moment just the next moment from what came before it? Does that make sense? Like, yeah, no, everything, that makes sense. everything that, you know, every day is just what the day previously set up for it. So there was no other way the next day could have gone because the day prior, like, because the day prior had already yeah. kind of happened and set it up to be that way. And your thoughts so, and your opinions yeah, and stuff. It's like, like the, the next domino couldn't have done anything besides fall in that exact position because yeah. this domino was going to push it you know without yeah. it sounds like you're on my side now no i'm saying that's what you're saying oh, okay i'm just i'm just kind of like <laughs> i'm just i'm you not just saying just, that's just what just it understands is. Your yeah, side. i'm just yeah. saying that's what you're con- that's what yeah. i definitely that think up. that um at least the things at least of my life all that i have that's because that's all i control yeah i know that that's spontaneous because I, I always throw myself you know monkey yeah. wrenches here and there yeah like i'll just literally just i don't know i just i listen to my subconscious and when i mm. do i'm always right for it could be the craziest things too it could be like the most random like sometimes my brain will just tell me to do like wild shit you yeah. know what i mean and i listen to myself and i'll be like yeah i fucking i i i i benefit from that i benefit from not yeah. like going against yeah. my internal like wherever my 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 compass is trying to take me mm. um so I, d- I definitely believe that, yeah. What kind of wild shit, dude? Okay, so okay, let me let me, let me try to fork one up. So Sorry, this wait, is one situation, really quick, right? I, th- I think we had to go. You guys have to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't. Much. <laughs> I've been <laughs> no, waiting like for a good moment, but then yeah, I'm like, yeah, it's yeah, not a good fine, moment to, to to interrupt. But yeah. Thank you guys for having us, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm glad that you guys are here. You just mm-hmm. grab your mic and stuff. Oh, yeah, good huh. talking to you. Yeah, good to meet you, man. Yeah. Much love, bro. You have a good one. Likewise, bro. Godspeed. Peace out. I love you. Um, here, let's. Move that a little bit. Okay. Yeah, we're we're just a quick technical intermission. Oh uh, yeah, we'll be right back after these brief yeah. messages. I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just gonna leave it. Oh, I don't mess you up, cool. Woo! Oh, my, my bad. <laughs> Getting real metaphysical. Sponsored by Pepsi. Well, Cherry Pepsi. By Pepsi Cola. I did a poll on my Instagram today of like, I put like Wild Cherry Pepsi or Cherry Coke, and Cherry Coke won by a lot. Yeah. But I, I grew up drinking Wild Cherry Pepsi. So. And uh, I think pe- Cherry Pepsi is different. Than cherry. It does, right? I think they're both gross. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think Cherry Pepsi or uh, Cherry Coke will taste like Dr Pepper. Kind of, I can see that. A little bit. Ferrero Rocher's are fucking bomb. Yeah, they really are. Or a uh, fucking vanilla Coke. Do you remember that shit? Oh, yeah, vanilla yeah, Coke's sick. I mean, you can get those at, like, the Coke freestyle machines oh, and shit. Yeah, I feel like, like it's not the same. same. Yeah. It's like it's not Coke's specific vanilla blend or whatever. All it's right, cold guys. in there. It's fucking cold. I think your air is a little bit. Yeah, it is. I turned it on because Vaheem said it was hot. Did I? You were hot? Yeah. I never said that. Yeah, earlier. I don't remember saying that. Yeah, you said it's hot in here. Oh, I, I said, okay, I'll turn the air on. Maybe it was like before the was podcast no way started. You could have said anything else. Yeah, really? yeah. I don't remember. You, you don't have a choice, Raheem. It's your neurons. Your remember. neurons are all Wait, in the position that they. Like, hey, only if you shot right. Could be. I don't remember ever saying how we're feeling warm. I was like during the podcast. I was like, damn, it's kind of cold. Yeah, no. I, I, you said it before the podcast, and I was like, oh, I'll turn the, I'll turn the air on. I might have said something else. So I tighten up this frame a little bit. There we go. Oh, hit that shit. Hit that shit. Hit that shit. Um. Why are you not hitting it? Hit it. <laughs> <laughs> You're not hitting it nearly as hard as I thought you would. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'm um, upset if you got here, man. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. We're still on. Yeah. We're still going. Cool. All right. How are we? How are we gonna? Uh, you can just get just get right back in. Just get right, right back in. Put a fucking jacket. It's cold. Yeah, you should have like a steering wheel here. That'd be hard. Yeah, yeah, right. I got this shit from outside. It was like, just like a hole, just like this. I should. I, I've been. I've been meaning to get seatbelts for it, so that people can strap. Oh, that's in. tight. Yeah. Yeah, because there's like the little buckle things there. But so uh, might as well be. Yeah. Yeah. I always want to sit in the middle. Even when I was a kid, I always used to, like, used to try to. I don't know why. Like I want yeah. to sit like in between be... these two seats for yeah. some reason. But then the this buckle, like, uncomfortable. yeah, super uncomfortable. Yeah. 
Um, you want to, before you leave him, you want to give them one last message? Come uh... What do you want to say? What do you want to be immortalized on the internet forever? Let's see, it's a, it's a tough question. <laughs> dun 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 dun. Dun dun dun. Don't even think about it too much, man. Just yeah. whatever your soul yeah. is telling you. Um. Don't forget to leave your lights on when you leave your house. Shaheen, that's not environmental. Whoever's the owner of the white sedan, <laughs> you left your lights on. Yeah, oh, it was wait, good. Did, did, did I say it the other way? Um, yeah. You said, what you doing? Don't forget to leave your lights on. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. You know what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah bitch ass nigga. Yeah, yeah. I, I was trying to call it, uh, I was trying one. to see what you were on. I'm right here doing this podcast right now, but I'm, I'm going to call you after, right? Can I see him? Hi. We live in the mix, the Hummingbird Podcast. Oh. <laughs> Alright then bro I'm, 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 I'm gonna call you in like 30 minutes or something yep, so Later guys Alright peace. Right, peace I'm not gonna call his ass Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love y'all man Much love you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Safe travels Stay safe Let me grab my Yo 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 How my levels looking Yo, yo your levels yo. are looking Good? Fantastic yo. Yeah. Serendipitous Even yes. Alright guys that was good All right. All right. Peace, peace. Finally, those fucking assholes are gone. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, all right. Now down to the more intimate uh, part of this podcast. We're getting a little bit more, getting a little bit more personal. So I'm just going to throw it out. Um, what, how did you get started on this music? On music in general? Yeah. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's just always been something... Music, this is going to sound super corny, but music has always just moved me, like, profoundly since I was a kid. Yeah. It's just something I just love, and, like, I don't know, like, I, that's how I learned a lot of stuff, um, was through music. And everyone in my family is kind of, like, an artist in some way. Okay. Like, my dad was a DJ. Um, my mom, like, makes clothes. My brothers are probably the, the biggest influence that I have. I have two twin older brothers that are, like, exactly 10 years older than me. And they produce, they do like, you know, graffiti and stuff like that. So they were just putting me on to all types of shit. So yeah, I'm, I'm born in 96, they're born in 86. So you, you can- Where'd you, you grow up? I grew up, uh, I was born in, um, I was born in like Pasadena area. Okay. And then I grew up for the most time in the IE, uh, mm -hmm. in Ontario is where I'm from mainly. But yeah, I've just, I've always had just all types of different influences musically just around me. Like my sister, she was, she also sings. My older sister, my younger sister, she's like a hip hop dancer and stuff. Um, so it's just a lot of creativity around me and a lot of different, um, I don't know, it's just always something that I kind of just wanted to express myself in that way. Yeah. And it's always, I would always just like cry during certain songs or just yeah. like feel it so much. You know what I mean? I don't you know. Like, like I don't, I don't like feel like too many things. Hit you more than it was than anything other else, yeah. people like around you too. Like, For sure. Like, oh, there's, I was I always kind of like a mute more. kid, like not mute, but I was just like. I, w I was never like super emotional in any sort of way, you know what I mean? Yeah. But music for some reason like just touches my soul. So I always, that's always been something I wanted yeah. to do. And because of my brothers producing, they actually taught me how to use FL when I was nine years old. I have an old, oh. old computer that has all the first songs like that I produced and rapped on and shit yeah. when I was like nine, ten. So you've been doing this for a while. You've been like. Yeah, for sure. It. But actually getting back to JD's point when he was here like about um, the best hint for like starting music or to, to really get good at music is to have people around you that do it. That's certainly the truth because I've, I always did it. It was always a thing that I did, but I didn't really start taking it seriously till I met the worst gen, which is my, my collective. Um, I met them like the beginning, the end of like junior high going into high school. Oh, wow. And, um, we just, we just linked, we're just on, on the same type of shit. You know, they started rapping, um, around the beginning of when I met them and it really just, I, I just see like my two, closest friends Remy and Edie just like going back and forth and um realizing like damn like we could really do that like if like if they're, they're doing this I could just like be the producer and just learn how to um just get this shit recorded and get something under under those raps and like we could be like a self-sufficient machine and it's kind of it's just like this one vision I've been working towards and that's you know here we are today yeah yeah, what what's the like ultimate vision? Like what what do you what's your ultimate goal doing this whole The thing? ultimate goal is just to be able to create shit that we like in general. Like I, I actually started as a visual artist probably before anything. Like okay. since I was a young I always just drew, drew and painted and stuff like that. Um and all did like I want to get into films and I want to get into all these different types of things, but I figured like let me this is towards the end of high school. 
I was like 17 coming to this uh, revelation that, yo, I got to pick something and get really good at it first. Like, let me pick one thing. And I chose music because number one is probably the easiest thing out of (laughs) all those things to get good at for real. It's probably the easiest. And it's the most influential. You can do it by yourself, like with movies, which is probably my final goal. I really want to get into film and have that be a way that I can really express. I, I feel like that's like the most profound and like prestigious form of art because it requires every other form of art to be on lock. You have to have good music, good writing, good acting, good colors, yeah. good, just all these things, good cinematography, photography, all these different type of things. Um, and um, if anything is off point, then you'll be able to see that, you know? Yeah. But I was like, yeah, let me start with music because it's like an easy thing that I can do just on my own. And um, it's probably the most influential form of art, you know? Like, yeah. if I would have just stayed being a visual artist, and even if I ended up being, like, Picasso-level, like, war, like, he's the fucking greatest, there's only so much influence you really have in that realm. You know what I mean? Like, you're... Yeah. It's, you become, it's, like, a part of history in that sense, It's for but, such a niche thing. I mean, people yeah. know who you are, but do they really think about your art? And does your art really influence the way that they live? Probably not. Yeah. But artists, just any random artist, not even the greatest artist, just, like, a random middle-tier artist, will change the way that a person speaks who listens to them yeah. will change the way that the really their mind works. It's like, you know, so I, I always felt like I have good perspectives and stuff like that, that I could add. And I feel like, you know, there's a lot of the same thing going on in music, at least the type of music that I'm making, like hip hop and stuff. And I could add something fresh. I could just come with a new perspective, a more like, I don't know, like pos- uh, positive perspective, a more optimistic perspective. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Coming from, from like a deeper, from like a deeper but I mean, I, I don't want to say that, that, like, there's not a lot of deep music out there, but I feel like what tends to, like, do well right now is... Right now. Yeah. Exactly. It's very... And it's changing. Do you feel it kind of changing, too? Like, I think it's changing. Like Kendrick and stuff. Like I think it's... Seeing? I think I'm in the right place. I think we are in the right place at the right time. Like, yeah. for people like me who listen to the things that I listen to and want to make the things that I make the 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 paradigm is like circling back around to like people don't want to just hear the same old bullshit i feel like we should we're coming out of this like maybe 10 year period of where everyone just wanted to hear the same thing like in every genre not even just hip just in everything like yo we want it to sound like this or get that shit away don't do nothing weird like the song is going to be structured like this and you're going to talk about these sort of things like it's going to be this bpm and now there's a bunch of artists that are coming out that are making it to where People want to hear. And I think it's just the times that we're living in, too. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on, like, socially, politically, just environmentally, that, like, people want to hear something substantial. Especially, like, during this this last year um, with COVID and all that, like, I'm sure you had some stuff maybe that you wanted to release that you're like, maybe it's just not the time for this. I know for me, that was definitely the case. We had a bunch of, like... Yeah party type things lined up like, oh let's release this, these feel good records and then the george floyd stuff happens and then you know COVID, and then all this it's like it's not even the time for this like yeah it's, it wouldn't even make sense to put out they'd be like what are, you, what are you guys doing so we decided to just steer clear of all that and really the only songs that did well in that beginning point especially of like the whole COVID and the the protests and stuff like that are the ones that were substantial in like what was being said you feel yeah me? yeah no 100 percent I feel like I feel like we're it's almost like cynical the nature of like w- the way that the art and stuff comes back in. Yes, like, I feel like we're in the second version of the '60s. Yes, right now. exactly, that makes bro. Sense. Exactly the way that I, with exactly what you're saying, I try to compare it to like we're coming out of the Dark Ages and this is like the New Renaissance. Yeah, and that's what the '60s was. The '60s was a Renaissance in a lot of ways. Yeah, um, creatively and you know all types of things. Yeah. Yeah. So we're we're on we're on that next wave and that's like it's a uh we're, we're lucky right for like sure we're just really lucky to even get a chance to uh to be in because 10 15 years ago if like if we were trying to do exactly what we we're trying to do now we would we wouldn't i don't think it would work do you think it would work 10 years ago no no way no way no way it'd have been laughed out the room yeah <laughs> yeah but uh, now, now anything's just kind of possible as far as like sonically. It, there's a lot of weird shit coming out. Yeah, it's you, lovely. You, I haven't heard any of your music, so it's like hard for me to really even know what you're making. But well, is it like? Yeah, it's definitely. I felt like yeah, our album came out at the perfect time too, 
because it we we dropped uh, January first of this year, um, the worst gen album, um, and I feel like it came at a time where like things were just pa- like the whole world was just paused, and it was a great moment. Like we have all types of things that we're talking about, all types of like you know real you know topics that we want to delve into and the album is like mad different from song to song like we go through a bunch of different genres a bunch of different topics and stuff and it's meant to be like listen to like we, we we made an album that we want you to like hear what we're saying it sounds sonically good or whatever but it's meant to like take this message with you you feel me like yeah. every song even if it's like we have some funny songs on there but even there like listen to what's being said is and you'll like an take something from it is like theme of the of the album or is it like a, just a collection of of tracks yeah this one's just more like more more mixtape vibes of this one yeah. because this is like the first debut group project that we're doing so i definitely like i said there's eight of us right yeah there's all like there's rappers uh producers instrumentalists all types of things so for this first one i definitely wanted to take it in the direction of like here is like a snapshot here's like a table of contents yeah. of all of the sounds that you can expect to hear from us or most of the sounds you can expect to hear from us and um we have our own individual group projects i have my project that's coming out next month um Fuji has his, Remy has his, Amber has hers. It's very close to being finished. And we'll get into each of those sounds. Like if, let's say, Casino Park is your favorite song on the Worst Gen album, then we have a whole album of those yeah. that she made. If, if whatever, uh, Jumanji is your favorite song, we have a whole album of those. And we'll kind of get into everything. But yeah, for that first album, just wanted to make sure that like we cover as much ground as possible. Yeah. Um, but still make it flow, though. Still make it listenable from like beginning to end. But there's like big changes in energy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... That's sick. That's like you know, fucking like Sid and Tyler and like all that shit. Like, yeah. Same sort of same sort of energy. Where it's yeah, like, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, really influenced by them coming up, especially, um, and just yeah, the breadth of what they were doing. You could have like yeah, Tyler and Haji doing the kind of song that they would do, and then the internet is the next song, and then Frank is like two songs. It's just like it's yeah. crazy. It's so much different textures and like yeah. So that's yeah, that's, yeah. just like a cool cool collective of people who are all. How do you guys all find each other? Oh, no, you told me. You, you guys... Well, so the, was that everybody? The main group of us, like, the the original Worst Gen... So me and Shanks produce all of the music, essentially. Mm-hmm. Kaiser produces, too. But we produce, like, a, a line share, me and Shanks, as neither nor, because that's, that's the duo. Okay. And um, that's been my best friend since third grade. I've known that dude, like, my whole life. I remember he was, like, the new kid that came to my school. Yeah. Are and, you neither or nor? Uh, I guess I would be... I guess I would be... N- neither? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a decision that you've just made right now? Just, or yeah. Something? Yeah, I guess okay. I never thought about it like that. Yeah. But, yeah, I just like, just like that better. I'm yeah. more of the two-syllable person. Yeah. And Shanks is real, like... Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, real stoic dude <laughs> Um, who's going to speak through his music, you know? Yeah. Um... So yeah, there's that. But yeah, that's been my friend since... That's been my, my best friend since third grade. We kind of like separated a bit you know because like they start to put you in different classes and stuff like that as you get into high school and stuff so like um i didn't i was chilling with him from like third grade until like maybe seventh grade and then we didn't speak for maybe like three four years and when we linked back up we had like a similar we have the same class or something and i was like yeah what are you doing he's like i'm doing music and i'm doing music too and you know so it's i don't know it's just it's kind of meant to be like when we linked up again it was kind of like nothing ever happened and in that time that i wasn't talking to him i had met Edie and remy and i started working on music with them so i kind of it's kind of just like all these people that i know and we're kind of just like we're we're it's not just, it's not an artificially put together thing though it's like those are all very organic we have each other's back those are my brothers yeah you know for sure um yeah i guess like the the newest members being like aaron and jay feliciano and stuff i met them at pcc yeah also very organically oh, you went to pcc yeah exactly that how you know fahim too exactly yeah okay yeah. all right mm-hmm. i didn't even realize that aaron was going to pcc he too. was yeah wow yeah, I, I was gonna go and then fucking COVID happened. Oh man, yeah. so glad, so glad to have met Aaron for sure. Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, how's uh, have you been doing during COVID? Like, how have I been doing? I think pretty well, uh, all things considered. Um, me myself, I'm a homebody already, but obviously, like, it's having an effect on all of us. Just not even having the option to go out and do things because yeah. I spend eighty five percent of my time indoors, anyways. But I do like to, you know, go out on, you know, go out on hikes or just go out to a party every now and then or whatever. Yeah. Um, I kind of, I need that, you know? Yeah. And I feel like, honestly, I'm getting to a point now with this COVID thing where I've been inside working like I normally would. But now I'm realizing that, like, because I haven't had a chance to get out and have new experiences, um, I kind of ran out of things to write about for a little bit. Yeah. It's like I fucking wrote about everything that I've 
I wrote about everything that I've experienced, you know? So what I really started, like this this album that's coming out next month is kind of like an experiment where I was like, okay, well, I wrote about everything that I've experienced, so now let me just do like some sci-fi type stuff. Let me write a story. Let me write through the, 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 the lens of somebody else. Yeah. You know, a character that not necessarily is me or, but somebody that I relate to. And yeah. then just kind of take that down and see where that goes. So the whole album, it's like not even from my, from like a first person perspective necessarily. Is it it's from, me following this character oh, that so I it's created. One, it's one character throughout. Yeah. So, so the album that you're working on, is it more of a like concept album? It's a concept album, yeah. Oh, that's you awesome. You can call it that, yeah. That's awesome. How, how, uh, lengthy is it? Um, it's it's nice. I feel like by today's standards, albums should just be shorter because yeah. people's attention spans are, are mad, you know, short. <laughs> yeah. So um, I feel like I th- so there's like there's about I'm gonna say eight songs. Okay, yeah, gonna, it's a good length. I'm gonna say yeah, it's, it's a, a good length. length. It's just like okay, this is not this is a chunk of work, but at the same, it's not like so much where you know you're gonna fall out of sync or you're gonna not be by by the time it's over. Like, you know, I still have your attention by the time it's yeah. over, you know? Yeah. Like, 35 good minutes, and that's all they really need. No, know? that's definitely... And then for, for a first project, too, because it, putting together a, an entire project, especially if you're trying to keep, like, one specific narrative... Oh, bro. Like, that shit's Never doing this shit again. Hard. Never doing this again. It was the hardest thing I ever had to do to really, like... Fill in the holes because, yeah, obviously, like, the first couple ideas just come naturally. Like, okay, well, this is this part of the story. This is how I want the story to begin. I always had that. And this is how I want it to end. Yeah. And this is, like, probably the climax. I had those three things. Yeah. But then, like, filling it, filling in between, like... And you don't just, want it to be, like, contrived and, like, yeah, you don't want to, like, insert yeah. yourself too much. You want it to be organic, but it's... Like and especially, like I said, it's a sci-fi concept album. That's cool. So to talk about the things that I'm talking about and not make it corny was a huge obstacle like it's a yeah. it's a bunch of spacey type of things it's yeah. so like how do i get through this album without saying like space race like you know yeah. what i mean like trying yeah. to just really get deeper into like what it would actually be like to be here yeah you well, know what was it influenced by or like what what uh is there like a movie or anything that there's there's a bunch of movies and comic books and albums that influenced it at different times yeah um but I don't know, I just all, I've always been into that type of stuff. So I think mainly it's, I just like thought of this character. It's influenced by, by different things at different times, but I thought of this character in a specific setting. Like I created this world and placed this character there and then just followed him. I just listened to him. And I was like, what, what would he be doing today? And maybe, okay, we skip a couple of days. Like, let's just get to the highlights of what are his experiences? What are his like, most fond memories in this setting that I've created. Um, but yeah, I'd say some movies and stuff. Uh, the Truman Show is like my favorite movie of all time. Uh, yeah, so I'm sure that influenced about, it at some point. Does does that thought uh, bother you? Do you get like anxious at the thought that this shit might all just be fake and like contrived? Do I get anxious? Not, I don't get anxious about th- those type of things. Um... I kind of just accept it. Like, I am of the opinion that, like, you know, I don't know anything. I'm not going to latch on to any ideas that I have no proof of this one or that one to to prove or disprove anything. So I kind of just live and just create and kind of just, like, I create about those things. Like, whenever I do have those thoughts about, you know, oh, this, what if this were a thing? Like, let's let's make make a song about it. And then that kind of just relieves any sort of, like, tension that that has in me, you know? Yeah. And I hope those things connect with people because some of the things I'm talking about it's just it's like some far out stuff. Yeah, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure it does. If you if you if you felt it, then I'm sure that there's other people that felt it and like can relate to that. That's exactly that's that's all I try to go off of, you know. Yeah. Like if I, tr- I all I'm trying to do is make music that I truly like. That like if I'm if my homie's coming, like we're going to somewhere and he's driving and I get in the passenger seat and he's playing one of these songs that I made, I want to be able to, I want it to be so good that I would have to ask like, yo, who is this? That I would Shazam it or ask him like, yeah. I try to just come from that um, viewpoint and always trying to switch that lens between like, okay, I'm making it. Now let's just listen to it. Let's listen to it. And how do we feel about this? You know? Yeah. And we all have those things. That's crazy. I'm sure even you listen to like songs. Whatever, would it, whether it be like a new album that comes out or whatever, and you should listen to it. And you're like, I would have done this differently, or I would have said this instead of that. And yeah. this is my opportunity to just like make it exactly what I want it to be, and not like compromise in any way. So that was super important to me for sure in making this, which is making exactly what I want to hear. And I really don't care too much, like 
if it connects all the way because this is exactly what i wanted to make yeah you know are, are you, i hope it connects are you proud of it are for you, sure 100 awesome. i think there's i'm i'm retiring after this i, I have yeah. no plans on making any like solo albums like i'm just gonna go back to being a producer do you really but, think that that you'll never you'll never end up doing... i don't know about never but right now i have no plans on doing okay. that i think this like i've said everything i had to say and i've made the thing that i wanted to make at least for now i'm sure in two years i'll come back and be like oh shit i could have done this differently or whatever but i had to really challenge myself you know because i really yeah. just started making like total songs all on my own like you know rapping and the beat and stuff and everything just yeah. making songs in totality um so like I like in in specific, I just started rapping, like as a thing. I always like sung hooks and stuff. That's yeah. hooks come easily to me. I just have to do something catchy that's gonna get stuck in my head. Um, but actually doing the verses and getting like deeper into the story, that's something that like because I listen to really deep stuff like that. Like I listen to like Ghostface Killer, who's incredible at that at like drawing out a story. Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, all those type of people who are like really are able to put you in a place with their words. Yeah. Like you really you you feel the weather, whatever they're describing, like you you hear the background noise of where you're really there. So really trying to take it to that level and I feel like I've I successfully did that. I'm happy with what I did for that's sure. That's awesome. Right now. That's that's great cuz the worst the worst is like if you were to have gone through this whole thing and you're like I'm not really Yeah. I'm not really fucking with it. Now. Yeah. I'm and that's why How long have you been working on it? This one? Um I've been working on it actively like Maybe like a year and a half. Okay. A year and yeah. a half. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't know exactly what I was doing. At, I knew, I was like, okay, I want to make some spacey shit. Like, yeah. what I, I was, I always ask myself and other people when I'm working with it, because I help other people put together albums and stuff too. And I try to just like have some sort of loose blueprint of, like, okay, what is the sound that we're looking for? Like, where do you want this to be played? And what do you want people to think of? Like, what color best represents this? And all those type of things. Um, and for me, for my album, I decided like, yeah, I just want this to be spacey. I want to mix like a shit ton of reverb. <laughs> yeah. A lot of reverb, but then like just tasteful too, because yeah. it's not, I'm not the first person to make a space album or a space song or anything like that. Yeah. It's been done before. So it's just, that was, that's a big thing for me. It's just like learning to like do it artfully, like do this idea that we all think about. And it's so vast that there can be endless amounts of things based on that topic just to come at it from a new perspective you know and kind of pose like new questions yeah and it's it is like social commentary in a lot of ways of like um where i think where we are is heading that's what that's really what i'm trying to do with this album is like based on kind of like on some what was the book called 19 uh, 1984 19 i never read it but 1984 I it what i hear yeah that book came out like what the 1800s or 19 like the early I, 1900s I think, yeah, yeah like early 19 like the 1920s or something i, I think i am I'm right so he was just that it that is social commentary the 50s? Was it the 50s? whatever i don't know, it I, really I don't know but he but, but he, yeah. at the time of the book there was no way for him to... He was just predicting, okay, based off, this is where we're at in life. And this is where I think it could be by then. And he ended up being right, maybe not by 1984, but by yeah. 2012. A lot of the things that he talked about had been a thing. Yeah. So for this, like, I'm definitely just like, just observing what's around me and using and supplementing that with my imagination. Just like, okay, well, if these things continue the way that, that they're going, then this is where I think that they'll be. And kind of just like, yeah. that's that's the world that I created. Yeah. yeah, where do you where do you think it's heading? Um, if you want to talk about it, if you want to if you want to save it for the album, then you can save it for the album. I think it's it's one of two ways for sure. It's one of two ways, and it depends on how involved we get as people. You know, um, I would like people to just be more involved and start to claim their power more. You know, like we have so much more power than we're led to believe, and um. I, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna get too more, but I'll just yeah. say that, like, I made this to kind of just like, I want people to see this world that it's gonna get uncomfortable. If, you're, you're, if you listen to this album, it's gonna get uncomfortable at times, maybe. Um, and I kind of just wanna throw that in people's faces, like, yo, this is some far out shit, but it's not like necessarily totally out of the realm of possibility that this is where we're headed, you know? Yeah. And it's this it's a lot of duality in that. It's, I always try to like put those things in. So it's a lot of like commenting on, okay, these are the good things about where we're heading and then these are like, yo, some shit we gotta we gotta work on, we gotta change. Um Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's I am interested. <laughs> like I, yeah. I like I wanna I wanna hear it and I wanna hear 
what your sort of like take is on where this whole thing's heading because really it's it's a scary thought that mm-hmm. like that things might just kind of fall apart or collapse or yeah. we might get to yeah. a point where we're so advanced that the humanity's gone and that the you know that things get like sterile like there's there are a bunch of different possibilities of like where we're heading but just it's like so stereotypical but like as technology mm-hmm. progresses we we are becoming less connected to each other and we're and i think that could hit like a weird breaking point yeah for sure and we're like we're leaving a lot of the choices up to like these autonomous like figures and stuff like that yeah. i feel like yeah if we just claim our power we'll we'll be good i believe that 100 yeah. percent. i believe that we can really like as a species you mean or as like, a species for sure yeah i feel like we can crack the code and enter this new renaissance that we're starting and we can choose kind of which way it goes from here yeah um and I've seen a lot of good things. I, I've met a lot of people recently who are on the album um, who, you know, give me hope. Like, I'm not the only person who's thinking about these type of things. I get a lot of inspiration from random people. There's, like, a random girl that I met, like, on the train that we, she was, like, an environmental, she's going to school to be, like, an environmental scientist. And then we were just going back and forth. And I was like, that really inspired a song or two that are on the thing. You know what I mean? Like, wow, I never really thought about those type of, like, issues like that. You know, like, yeah. there's there's just a lot of things to care about. And I think, like, you know, if we all pick what we care about, then, you know, we, we can make good yeah. progress. Do you feel like she was implanted, like, at that time for, a sp- like, hmm. are you being used as, like, a vessel and you had that experience on purpose? I don't know if it's on purpose or not. I'm not sure. What I do know is that I should be showing up places and I just try to show up. Yeah. I just try to be, like, mentally available wherever I'm at. Because yeah. just because you're somewhere doesn't mean, like, you showed up. Yeah, you're not present. Yeah, you're not pre- I try to just be present and really, like... I can tell you, know, you, you seem very present. Now. Yeah, I try to just be, like, in tune with what's going on around me. I try to just be... I try to talk to people and interact with the world around me and stuff like that and, yeah. and experience the world around me. Um, and then I just use those things to create with, you know? Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For but, sure. Yeah, but maybe that train girl was... Uh, was uh, I don't know. I, I really, I really like. I, I know I keep getting back to it, but this is the kind of shit that that bothers me and like keeps me, fucking, going a little bit crazy. Is like just the I, I, nothing's. I, I don't think anything's an accident. Mm. Like I really think that everything, everything happens on purpose. And like when I'm, I don't know if you have the same experience, but like sometimes when I'm writing stuff, I feel like I'm not actually writing it. And For I'm sure, one hundred percent. Picking it up from somewhere else. I'm like an antenna. And it's and I'm and I'm being fed things and I've just trained my antenna through like all the work that I've done like working on songwriting and fucking musicianship and stuff. Right. But my antenna has gotten good at picking up certain signals and then I can translate it to things that people understand. That's a big part of that's what I mean by showing up. I feel like most of my best ideas like couldn't have even came from me. Like I don't even know enough about these things that I'm talking yeah. about to really delve into it. Um, but I do believe, like, we, we, we talked about this earlier, about how, like, you know, I, I try not to stay too attached to any, like, specific ideals or anything, because, any, any, like, anything can be true. But I do believe, well, the one thing that I kind of do always go back to and refer to is, like, um, I do believe that there is something that connects all of us. Yes. And everything, and I feel like we can tap into that. Like, it's a, there's, like, a well of knowledge. Just like you said, it's like a beam, but I, I don't know, I think of it as more of, like, a blanket like that spreads like across and through everything and then like your gravity or whatever you want to call it like just pulls these things towards you if you show up i i, I do believe that like some of the things i made like how did i do that like i can't yeah. i can't rap that well i don't make music that well necessarily but i just showed up in something like but you well you can because you did but it didn't come from <laughs> yeah, me though I, is yeah, what i'm saying yeah. like yeah as did it come from me i'm not sure yeah. um I don't know, I'm just really, that's, that's, I try to remain humble <laughs> yeah. for that reason. It's like, cause I don't even feel like a lot of those things I was able to, I definitely did not do those things by myself. Yeah. I definitely didn't. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, so going back to the thing that you said about the like things that sort of connect us all, there's something that was tripping me out for a while was frequencies. Cause mm-hmm. I, I got really into like, like just kind of learning about law frequencies of attraction and, and stuff. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Law of attraction shit. But w- one thing one thing that that stuck out to me was um so in the i want to say that oof, 
in the sixties or the seventies, there was this guy who was uh, uh, his name's escaping me, but um, he was like the top um, uh, lie detector. What what is that called? What the the uh, ah shit. I, everything's escaping me right now. Yeah, it was. I don't. I want to say stenographer or something. No, I don't, but, I don't even well, know. you know the lie detector. Yeah, test, yeah, right. You know, right. he was he was the top. He was the, the top. The guy. guy. He was the top guy. He, he. It was very early on in the technology, and as he, you know, he ended up retiring. And when he retired, he ended up just doing a bunch of different sort of research on on these. It, it works out based off like electromagnetic sort of frequencies. So he was doing. He was he was basically hooking up plants to lie de- to the lie detector test. I wish I could remember the name of it. Hold wow. on, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up I'm gonna look this yeah, up yeah, yeah. so I can think of the actual name. Lie detector <laughs> test. What the what the fuck is polygraph? Polygraph test. Polygraph, duh. polygraph technician in the world. So he was hooking up plants to it, and he was just like he had all these fucking theories. Well, he was eating yogurt one day, and it was yogurt that had like fruit on the bottom. So he was eating the yogurt, and he was just going for it, and finally he, like, tapped into the fruit at the bottom. And as he did that, he saw a spike on the on the polygraph machine, and he was just like, well, like what the fuck? That was like, connected to what? The plant. The plant. It was connected to the plant. So he was like... That is how like, far away from the yogurt? Um, Like, it's in the same room, but it's not touching it. Like, it's not touching him. So mm-hmm. he was like, what the fuck? Like, what did it just spike? Like, is there... Are these related? Or is a, is <laughs> me getting to the fucking fruit related? So he starts kind of like, I don't want to say losing it, but he starts getting like kind of tripped out. He's like, what the fuck? Is there is something going on here? So he's doing all these fucking tests. He does all these tests. So he realizes that the plant is responding to his response to the yogurt hmm. because he sees the yogurt. So he did a bunch of different tests to where um, oh, wow. he, he would have intentions. He would He would imagine hurting the plant he would imagine burning the plant and the the polygraph would spike on the plant because the plant was able to it's called primary perception wow. is the name of this phenomenon so this has been also so that sounds kind of outlandish but then the mythbusters actually did a fucking experiment where they put themselves in this like sealed shipping container and they did the same sort of thing where they had the intention of harming this plant and one of the guys imagined burning the plant and the shit spiked and they can't explain it other than that the that there's some sort of like you said like woven sort of connection between every yeah, being. Yeah. It's like you're in the same room when with someone that. who's 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 really depressed or feeling shitty or they're sad. You can feel it. Like mm. and I think that's also something that everybody's been feeling too with the whole covid thing is like it, it's like this group sort of like depressive like the the general frequency has lowered yes, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I don't know. I just think it's incredibly interesting that 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 phenomenon seems to be like an actual bull, actual measurable thing. I yeah, don't know. trippy. No, yeah, that's that's fucking amazing. I didn't I didn't know anything about yeah, that. Yeah, you have to look up that. Myth but I have experienced similar things, you know, just in terms of yeah, like 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 you said, people's energy and stuff like that around you definitely has an effect, and I see that my energy has an effect on the people around me. Um, and the things that actually come to me, like I literally just, you know, I'm, I manifest the things that have come into my life for sure. You know, it's just like in my head, it's already like a done deal. It already happened. So. And that's for, for that reason, though, I do have problems sometimes like kind of just letting go of something when it doesn't work out, when it doesn't happen, because in my head, it's like, what the fuck? It was supposed to happen already. Yeah. So sometimes it doesn't. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm getting better with that. But. There was a there was a moment of time where it's hard for me to let go sometimes. Yeah. You know? Do you pre-plan conversations like before you go into them? Uh, not recently. I used to, and it never works out that way. So yeah. like today, I didn't even. I was doing some totally other shit. I was just working on music all morning. I just knew that I was coming here, but I was yeah. just like, I thought about doing a little bit of research too. I was just like, no, nah, let's just go in and have a good conversation. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. know it's gonna work out that way. Yeah, yeah. the podcast just kind of it just kind of does itself. Like exactly, it, it, it just. It's whatever. It's a conversation. I love this format, though. Like, I love the format of just being able to talk to someone yeah. for an extended period of time. Because, like, how often do you get to do that with somebody? Like, we're strangers. Like, exactly. I don't, I don't <laughs> fucking know you. <laughs> but I feel like I know you now. Right, I exactly. Like I, I feel like I like we've made, like, an actual connection because it's just, like, we just got a chance to 
talk to just link and it's not like oh we have 10 minutes to do this so let's talk about the most important shit then we got to go yeah yeah it's, it's it's definitely a cool format for sure yeah and it, and it's getting more popular too and it's mm-hmm. like i don't know i, I feel like it's interesting because like it's like kind of everything i feel like i'm actually getting in on something at the ground level yeah for once in my life <laughs> i feel like i'm always fucking behind yeah yeah so like, i feel that yeah so this is i don't know i i love doing this and i i love having I, people on I, I love talking to you this whole time I, I don't even know how long we've been going that's dope um how like how what what made you want to start doing this like obviously you started with fuck ton of joe rogan oh okay i, see. <laughs> I yeah. watched a lot of joe rogan and i was like i was like i can do that like i i feel like i can talk to people i feel like i can keep a conversation going like i i know how to like ask questions and like sort of like there's like because there's there's it's it's an art form to me, I, like, at least I, I try to think about it like that. Like, this entire time that we've had the conversation, even with everybody, I, as is the host of this thing, I have to be kind of like kind aware. Of just pivot, yeah. Yeah, I have What's to be aware on? and like, I'm like, if I feel like a topic's going on for like too long or like the conversation might get stale, I have to like, I'm thinking like, okay, where can I like throw out the next sort of like little fucking fishing line and hope that that takes us a certain distance. And um, But also it's just like, the sort of craving of like actual human connection i think has a uh, has sort of driven me to so you started this during quarantine right yeah yeah i started this uh, at the at i think i was kind of thinking about it before this whole thing hit I, actually did i start it before i don't even know how long i've been doing this at this point like like i said <laughs> i've been very inconsistent with it <laughs> like this is a i did one a couple weeks ago and that was the first one that i did in like a month and I'm trying to be, like, more consistent with it, but I don't know. Like, this, I mean, this isn't the main, this isn't even, like, my main focus whatsoever. Like, music is is pretty much my sole focus. I, yeah. I sit there for hours and hours each day, pretty much, just, like, driving myself fucking crazy doing mix. I've gotten, I've started doing mixing. Yeah. And that's... Like, mixing and, like, DJ mixing or, like... No, sorry. Like, engineering? Like, like, engineering. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Like, because... Yeah. Before, like, I would make stuff and then I would try to mix it and then it wouldn't work and then I would have to take it to somebody but and then even then it's kind of not quite what you would want sometimes yeah huh? it's hard because like like because then other people's ideas get imprinted or you're like you're trying to translate a message through another person and then that it's just like to me I was like okay I want to get to the point where I can cut out the middleman so that I can get like exactly what get your ideas out yeah exactly and it's like mixing mixing is an important aspect of this whole thing it's like it's certainly more creative than people give it credit for. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna, you can't just take the the same thing to be mixed by like two separate people, and it's gonna be the same. It's gonna be entirely different because yeah. of like the different flavors that people have. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And and like a clean mix isn't necessarily the, like best, the best idea. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's something that I've been sort of like experimenting. With. I don't know. Quarantine's been good to me in that sense where I can just sort of like hone in certain skills and stuff. I don't know, but you you haven't had you haven't had a tough time. Are you a depressed person? Not at all. Really? Um, I think I'm I might be annoyingly optimistic to oh, people. Oh wow! I think I'm one of those people. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, it's good for me. Yeah. Has it always been that way? Yeah, for sure. I've ne- I've I'm lucky. I don't want to. I'm not sitting here saying like, oh yeah, like bleh, but it's just I've never had problems with shit like that. Like I've always just kept it moving. I think I get that from my mom. My mom is just really like, all right. Well, this happened. Now what? Like we're on to the next thing. Yeah. Just keep it moving. Just keep it moving, and um, because nothing else is gonna stop. The whole world is gonna continue whether you are with it or not. Yeah. Um. So I'm. That's and that's kind of what I mean. I feel like that viewpoint even is a more rare one, and that's one that I want to share through my music. That's why I kind of made that transition from like I'm a producer, which is how I started. It's like okay, like I have, like I have something to say as well. I have I have something to add to the conversation, or I have a new conversation that's not being had. So I I definitely want to promote more of, of that type of thing in a non-corny way it's kind of hard to be yeah. like optimistic and not corny <laughs> yeah, yeah you know what i mean guess, yeah because optimism people are it, it's shocking to mm-hmm. a lot of people i think yeah i think people aren't used to it and for some reason like that that sort of but people are drawn to that too mm-hmm. people as much as like people might be uncomfortable with it they're, they're drawn to that sort of like hope because everybody wants to have it mm-hmm. everybody secretly has it yeah and it's like just to be upfront with it and just be honest with it is like, yeah. Uh, so I'm yeah I'm I'm definitely I'm lucky in that way to. I just want to kind of like share 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 that mindset, you know. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, so quarantine has been pretty cool. Pretty cool. I remember, so we, we, we released a song. We made the song, like, the first day of quarantine, like, when it actually said, yo, okay, we're shutting down California. I was with my friends, Remy, who's a part of the worst gen, and Josh, you, you, you know Jay yeah. Feliciano. Yeah. So we were working on something, um, just having fun, just randomly, just me and, actually, me and Josh were in the studio first. He came through to, to my crib, and we're just working on something. Remy comes through later, and... Um, he was like, oh, man, this sounds like, you know, he was, we, that's kind of how everything starts, though. It's just almost like, we're kind of just like, just having fun. Like, he was like, oh, man, he started, he had this little flow that went with what's going on because they had just announced, like, at, like, 12 p.m. or something. Like, oh, yeah, so lockdown, or not lockdown, yeah. but, you know, like, yo, we're going on. Um, that was during BLM and stuff, too, Yeah, right? so there's a lot of things yeah. happening at once, and we're talking about all these things on the song. And we have all these, like I said, I've been working on this project for a year and a half, but that song that we started, we released it, we finished it, released it that day, and it had, like, a huge response. Really? Yeah, it had, like, oh. a huge response. Um and that kind of just opened my eyes to a lot of different things, you know? I think because uh, that was my that was our first song with the video. So I was like, man, that really makes it a lot more powerful. Just giving something, giving people, like, a visual to look at while they're listening to the song. That helps them connect to, like... with the vi- vi- video and it was that same day? Yeah, yeah. We just recorded a video on, like, an iPhone and oh, did, like, wow. some green screen stuff in the back. And just put it... We just threw it together. Like, and yeah. I'm, I'm normally way more calculated than that. I'm known amongst my crew to be, like, kind of, to kind of hold on to things for too long. Like, yeah. no, it's got to be right. It's got to be right. Um, but we were just like, nah, fuck it. Like, this is a dope song. Like, Remy was just like, like, oh, man, this sounds like, like, this is like a quarantine, like, social distance from the virus. He said something like that. And I was like, record that right now. That sounds amazing. <laughs> we're going to, that's going to be the song. And it's not at all what we intended it for it to be, but you got to just, like, listen to that internal compass, like I was yeah. saying. Um, so we just did that, released it, had a huge release. So that's had a big impact, honestly. Because that was, like I said, that was, like, day one of California quarantine that, we released this song that opened up tons of doors for me in terms of like um who I could work with and um you know just people starting to listen and stuff like that everyone we all care about those things whether we like to admit it or not um and for me in that moment yeah it just it gave me something to like look forward to you know yeah so quarantine's been kind of cool unfortunately yeah. yeah in a lot of ways yeah i mean as you know there's a lot of shit going on like, all things considered yeah, yeah. but i mean I feel like a lot of people, that's the the general consensus is like, well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know if that's the general consensus. <laughs> yeah. but, yeah. I know, but I know a lot of people, especially like a lot of creatives that are like, well, this has been like, you know, I've gotten a chance to, to really... Some time to sit down, down and yeah. learn something new or really just be with yourself. Yeah. And like I said earlier, it's just kind of get back in tune with yourself. And that's that's super important. Yeah. And um, to stop and to just sort of disrupt the... Because everybody was on this weird sort of like flow before of like you, you know you're you're or not even not even a flow it's more like a clock you know and you just did exactly what you were supposed to do at whatever put time. your head down like, just keep going like yeah exactly and then it totally disrupted the entire system pause the it world. made everybody realize like oh this shit can at any given moment fall apart all the shit that out that you were thinking about like from day to day like you realize a lot of that stuff doesn't even matter does not like matter. these things that you put so much weight on like oh it doesn't matter at all because when it comes down to it Boom! Like you know, yeah, yeah, so I feel that. yeah. I mean, we could be blasted back into the. There could be a nuclear war and blast back into the Stone Age, and it's like yeah. all the shit that you care about right now. You care about. You really care about like five percent of it, and that's like family, and that's like, you know, your your connection with yourself, and like a lot of the more like, like things that have like intrinsic value rather than this extrinsic. Shit, I don't even know. If <laughs> extrinsic. Yeah, I don't know. Um, well, I think we were hitting a pretty good time here. So, is there any uh, any message that you would like to push out right now? Any message that I would like to push out? I probably should have thought about something before I came here. You don't have to think about anything. Just no, not really. Your... Um, nah, man. I, I I really just hope that I guess just some something. I really just hope I get to create for as long as I'm conscious. And that's really important to me, and I think everyone should kind of strive to to do those same though that same thing or those kind of same things is create in their own lives. Not everyone is necessarily like a musician or um, like a painter or something, but everyone I, I believe everyone's an artist. Those are my favorite people are artists, just in the way that you carry yourself. Even it's just to be yourself and just to hone hone that that thing that nobody else has, and you know just do that. Yeah, I wish to do that for myself, and I I. 
am I'm glad to talk to people like you who I can tell is that same way just off of off off rip like you're just you're not you. trying too hard to do anything outside of what you would normally be doing. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Shout out to all those people out there. Shout out to shout all the creatives. Out, shout out to every single creator out there. I love you and he loves you and we all love each other. Yeah. All right. Well, that was the Hummingbird Podcast. Uh, tune in next time. Who knows? Maybe that might be in a week. Maybe that might be in a month. Who knows? All right. Bye, everybody.